Dr. Mike Ezratel. Yo! And Jared Feather. All right. Brothers of Renaissance periodization. Don't be a f idiot. Do you feel like there's any compounds in particular that cause you to feel, I guess, the most anger and anxiety? I have a very difficult time uh, perceiving some some normal human emotions. Whenever I come in my gym and something like that will. I was already super introspective in my first time where I really felt anger. Wow. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. I gained so much body water that I get sleep apnea and everything's down the drain. Wow. Nick and I both died at respectively seven months for that show. That's f crazy. Problem with our generation, these young folks, gutter brains. Are you on the YouTube side or the OnlyFans side? YouTube. <laughs> I just wouldn't think much about Sam Silk's training. Jared. I'm just kidding, he doesn't use comments. Just kidding, he sure does. Of course. <laughs> she was shooting growth into her ear. Do you guys ever use insulin? You some thoughts on that. You said a couple things about that, yeah. Anyways, boys. So, I just came back from a massive workout, 30-minute chest day sweet. with these guys, and it was the wettest I've ever been. <laughs> it was sweaty. I think we're all wet. Yeah. I was pretty wet. I don't need to wear the headphones. <laughs> he told me I didn't have to wear the headphones, Mike. What, do you think you're my dad? You think you're my biological father? Put on your headphones again, the trip. Hear the trick. Are we already? Are we going? Is this yeah, we going? Oh, cool. Yeah, it's super casual. In fact, honestly, I actually listened to one of your podcasts. Well, I think it was Fawan. Hmm. Uh, I forgot to ask you if you wanted to smoke before this. <laughs> <laughs> he did ask earlier. He's like, "Can I be high on the podcast?" I was like, "Oh, really? I'm pretty sure you're fine, man." Maybe we should just take a quick break and just really fast, you know? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> if I smoke, I'm just going to cough the entire podcast. That's okay. I only, get, edibles. Yeah. I only get high with edibles, and uh, it would take me one hour to get high. Oh, you yeah. only get high with edibles? Correct. Okay. And I only take edibles to sleep, and it's like 2.5 okay. milligrams. You won't see Jared again <laughs> if he ever gets high. You won't see me again. Is there a reason that you avoid edibles? Or no, avoid smoking? Yes, it makes me cough for an hour. Oh, that's why. It just hurts. Okay. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. Okay. I've just heard Andrew Huberman talk about smoking being bad so much that what? I still do it anyways. <laughs> Andrew Huberman uh, may be the last person to the party on smoking being bad for you. I remember all of school. Rough <laughs> 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 the crime dog <laughs> saying smoking is bad. I love Dare. Dare was awesome. Dare was great. Dare they class. dare you to do yeah. drugs, right? Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like when I go to Catholic school and they say, don't do sex before marriage. And then everyone Damn, in the Catholic really school is doing sex before marriage. Catholic uh -huh. school girls have an outfit that's basically porn. <laughs> <laughs> They're not really thinking that one through. Was that in Arkansas? Or, or, or did porn copy the Catholic girls? No, they sure did. But it's a hot outfit. Yeah. There's some uh, of my sisters in China that wear that. Hello, sisters in China. I am married. However, my son, Jared Feather, <laughs> is as of now single, and he loves all of you. <laughs> now, it may be strange for me to proclaim that he loves all of you, but I know for a fact that he does. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Are they light-skinned or, or darker-skinned? They're both. both. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the light-skinned ones, hello. <laughs> Tell the dark-skinned ones, Jared's home address. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. Oh, just like my God. friends. Well, I have more dark skin, so. Perfect. Look just like me. Oh, God. <laughs> I've been hard this whole time, so that's great. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I took Cialis before this. I really shouldn't have. Perfect. Anyways, boys, we have Dr. Mike Ezretel and Jared Feather, the brothers of Renaissance periodization. Um, See? Mr. Dr. Ezretel. Ezretel. Israel, Dr. Israel has a uh, PhD in sports physiology, is a competitive bodybuilder, is a um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu purple belt. Purple belt still? Currently. Brown belt. Brown belt. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and then co founder of Renaissance Periodization and a YouTube star with now over 1 million subscribers. <laughs> star. Congratulations on being a YouTube star. Oh, thank you. That feels like adult film star. <laughs> it's nice, but you can't tell your yeah. family about it. Same, same. Oh, you don't tell your family about it? No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is that? I'm kidding. My dad watches the channel. Oh, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. What does he think? I could do better. <laughs> okay. Sounds familiar. Dad shit. <laughs> sounds he's, awesome. really, he's really proud. But, uh, that's awesome. He, he says that when I swear, maybe I should do less of that. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Good advice. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I get the same thing from my family, too. Yeah. 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 You can only try so much. Yeah. But You're not a doctor, so. Huh? You're not a doctor, so. That's the worst part. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> but I'm a fake You're not a doctor. doctor yet? Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyways, I actually uh, want to get kind of deep with you guys because, uh, you know, we got all sweaty in the gym, but we didn't even get to talk about our personal life. So I was curious, Ooh, like, shit. why did you guys get into bodybuilding and how, when? I don't think you introduced Jared. Yeah, you I did. did. Yeah, you did. 
Yeah, I said, Jerry, said my name, bro. I said the brothers of Renaissance periodization. That's us. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no formal introduction. Very well. <laughs> yeah, so how did you guys get into bodybuilding? What was the first start? Because considering that not only is this, you know, your doctorate, but now it's like all the content that you do essentially, mm. or at least most of it, I think, yeah. unless you have a little secret OF or something in there. I have a few OFs. A couple. A oh, couple of those. Jared? Uh, me? I was playing football in high school, basically. and uh, High school. High school football in Missouri, where I was a fullback. That's great. And then I just started training f uh, weights because I needed to be big and strong for football. Mm -hmm. uh, I fell in love with weight training over football. And then by the time I had scholarship offers and shit, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to go to school for something else, probably exercise related. And I think I was training with weights about three years by that time when I got to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, this is a, the actual story. Like my mom was in great shape when I was a kid. Uh, she actually had like claustiotoma. It's just a growth next to the ear. She had a bunch of surgeries. She couldn't do anything physical my entire childhood. So like my first bodybuilding show was actually kind of for her, mm -hmm. which is, wow. yeah. Man, she, was, yep. she was shooting growth into her ear. <laughs> it's a growth. On oh, her ear. my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. But yeah, so she had like a bunch of surgeries and shit and, you know, battles with you know, medications and all that crap. And mm. So just whenever I was old enough and I remember she was in great shape and she wanted to compete back in the day and I was like, oh, I'm going to do it for her. But then I fell in love with it, of course. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's really cool yeah. to hear. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Craig's story. What he said about his like dad, yeah, yeah, he's proud of him cool. when he finally gained some size. <laughs> it's fucking wild. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so it's the heart strings, Jared. That's the real story. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, I just like training. <laughs> Next. Oh, my bodybuilding story. Mm. Uh, started wrestling in ninth grade because one of my friends started and I didn't have anyone to hang out with after school. So I just followed him <laughs> mm. with his approval. But and then uh after wrestling season i realized i was weak and that was a problem and so i started training to get stronger and then i got over time a few years of training I, at first i hated it really mm -hmm. i just kept doing it because you're supposed to do things and uh then i started liking it more and more and more what age was this Started training when I was 14. Okay. Damn. Yeah, that's early. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then I, about age well, 17, I started to like it okay. <laughs> mm. And then I was getting quite bigger. And then I stopped wrestling after high school. And in college, I started powerlifting. I like that quite a bit. But then I realized I like the kind of off-season-ish higher up training a bit more even than I like the peaking training mm -hmm. and the strength training. Yeah. And then uh, when I was in my early 20s, I really transitioned out of powerlifting into just training to get jacked. Started reading muscle magazines like Flex and Muscular Development. And uh, I really like the type of training. I like the look. I like the lifestyle. Um, and then I competed uh, in my first bodybuilding competition the same week that I defended my PhD Whoa. I'll say my PhD defense went a lot better than my first competition. <laughs> uh, competed actually with Mr. Nick Shaw, who's a co-founder of Renaissance Periodization. We both sucked. Yeah. But loved the whole thing mm -hmm. and kept training. And I've been competing for a little while now. Mr. Nick Shaw actually just turned pro. Whoa, congrats. Yeah. Nice. And then so I'm just uh, plugging away. I'd like to put at least a... My best possible physique on stage, mm. which might happen quite soon. Or I'll get hit by a car and nothing good will happen. Whoa. That's, you know, possible. That's always possible. That's always not. possible. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all these Teslas, Elon Musk doesn't care about <laughs> families. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was just talking about that with Craig, uh, Craig yesterday, though, about how um, we've had a lot of things happen in the last few years that have just been out of the blue. Like uh, how for him, uh, Rich Piano reached out to him to do a big video. He's like, yeah. I want to do like something about like uh, monsters exist or something. That was like his title of his video. Um, Rich and then a collab with Craig. And then five days later, Rich pa passed away. And then soon after that, Dallas McCarver passed away. Mm -hmm. And then soon after that, Craig's dog passed away. <laughs> so he kind of just didn't have had a pretty hard time. Mm -hmm. you know. So, and 
a lot of these things happen when you literally don't expect it, right? All the time, sure. all the time, yeah. on a daily basis. So I guess my thought is just like, if anything can happen and you want to do a bodybuilding competition and you want to be the top and you want to risk it for the biscuit, <laughs> fucking do it. Just do it. Risk it for the biscuit. The journey is the destination. Hmm. Brother. That's it. So what do you, what do you, uh, what do you feel like you guys sucked? What was it in like the qualifications? Uh, like did the judges give you guys any feedback on that first show? Nick and I? Mm -hmm. No. We had no idea how to peak. We had no idea how to do thyroid support. Mm. We had no idea how to do estrogen management. Okay. So we both looked about 20 weeks out. Damn. <laughs> I looked like I had never started dieting to be <laughs> Uh, you had abs on stage. They just weren't that great. Well, I think most bodybuilders start when they have abs. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. and at that point, I don't think it's a good idea to even go talk to the judges because what are they going to tell you? Right. You suck. If you already know what's going on. Uh, or you don't, but <laughs> are the judges going to give you farm advice? No. Yeah, probably not. They're just going to say get leaner. Mm -hmm. no, Nick and I both dieted respectively seven months for that show. Okay. Fuck. Wow. Um, That's fucking crazy yeah yeah but how, because we were go ahead how much weight did you guys lose if you remember i lost like five pounds nick lost like uh maybe 10 or something damn is that because that's when you started anabolics mm -hmm. yeah that was the first year you well, started anabolics. roughly right? yeah yeah so you were like, like, yeah, here, you know? yeah. Mm. Well, so i just escalate compounds into the show like everyone said and i just kept gaining weight right exactly dude <laughs> which is what i try to tell everybody when you know people who don't I don't want to call anyone ignorant, but sometimes there's, um, when you like check out comments on Instagram or TikTok or anything, don't, don't to be, right, exactly. Don't do that. Especially so, after the YouTube, you know, yeah. just don't look at them. Like there's a few people that like argue that Larry Wheel's cycle when he was saying it on my podcast was, um, you know, his cycle was only TRT, a little bit of Anavar, and then Clen and T3 for his last competition, right? Where he got second place, he almost got his pro card. But the issue there was people are like, there's no fucking way, because Larry is a fucking beast, he's huge, can barely make weight, but that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, he I could mean, barely make weight, he had to lose like 40 pounds, and some of it definitely muscle and intracellular water. Absolutely. Why the hell would he <laughs> titrate his yeah, you know, doses up? Exactly, the, the, the shit he was yeah. running in powerlifting, and you maintain a certain amount of muscularity no matter what, so your dosage is once you gain that amount of muscularity, don't mm -hmm. use high. He, he's definitely being honest about that. Yeah, for sure. He would have been screwed. He'd yeah. be 232. He was like 285 when we filmed with him the other day. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone's like getting mad at him for how much he ate after the show and just blew up. But yeah, I'm like, all, yeah. you blame this guy? Like, doing all, all those diuretics and just trying to lose 40 pounds. Who's everyone? Not everyone. It's just uh, the comments that. Most people made videos. No one. Sure. No one. <laughs> people with anonymous accounts. No? Yeah. And then Greg, of course. Who's Greg? <laughs> Greg said, Did he? No one. He made a video, yeah. I thought he was supporting it, though. I'm pretty sure. Because he, he did no, one with Larry. No, 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 wait. I remember what he said. When he gave <laughs> <laughs> Buy my cookbook. <laughs> when he, uh, no, when he gained that like 50 to 60 pounds, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Greg was just, went on a rant about it being which, you know, not inherently wrong. It's pretty fucking dangerous. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure and all that stuff. So. Right, it is. And then uh, I had a podcast with his coach and he's like, the coach was like, crazy thing about Larry, you know, I told him not to do it. I'm like, your blood pressure is going to be crazy. It's very dangerous. Larry does it, gains like 50 pounds, comes back with perfect blood pressure. Fucking wild. Mm. Some of us are just built for it. Mm -hmm. Like you and your calves. <laughs> Jared freaking told me at the gym today that when he was uh, like, what was it? High school or college. And before he started gear, he had decided to do some calf work and exercises for six right. months and gained an inch and a half. Then yeah. I just stopped doing direct calf work. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> throwing off my symmetry. Yeah, legit. <laughs> I was natural with calves. They were almost as big as my fucking quads. Jesus Christ. Real quick, guys. So while I was looking at the YouTube analytics, I actually saw that. 85% of you guys that watch this channel are not subscribed. And I want to ask very little of you guys, but if you enjoy this podcast, if you find value in it, then please do me this one favor and subscribe to the channel because doing so helps me get bigger and greater guests like the guests you are listening to today. Also, this channel is not sponsored, which means only the companies that I work with, which are Young Elaine Huge Supplements, are the companies that can help 
fund this channel by you guys using the code Nile. So code Nile gives you a discount of 15% off of Young LA and code Nile also gives you a, a discount of 10% off of huge supplements. And if you decide to purchase anything from any of these companies, it will help immensely for me by using my code. And this way I can travel to other guests such as Dr. Mike Israel next week and also upgrade an equipment to make this podcast bigger and better for you guys. If you guys don't mind me asking, do you guys ever use insulin? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I start using a lot of insulin, which for me is 20 units of Lantus per day. Mm -hmm. I gain so much body water that I get sleep apnea and everything's down the drain. So while I have used insulin productively in the past, recently I've only been going on two to three day streaks of about 10 units of Lantus okay. during my high carb days, mm. high calorie days. And then during my lower carb, lower calorie days, I just won't use insulin and it mm. makes a pretty good balance because I get pretty well fucking bloated towards the end of those three days. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'll use it for pretty consistently, but mostly when I'm massing. So hypercaloric, yeah. eating a lot of food. Right. When I move into prep, uh, maybe the beginning of prep when I still have high food, but then it's just, I cut it out. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you personally seen any benefits yourself or what are your thoughts on its use? Uh, I think the pump likely is a good indicator that your training volume is sufficient and it's probably a, a has its own separate mechanism for growth as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And the pumps on insulin are pretty fucking insane. Yeah. A uh, very clear night and day difference. So absolutely. And I think that insulin, uh, just that process in itself is also more insulin response, more carbohydrates, mm -hmm. probably more muscle growth. So. Yeah, it, it helps recovery quite a bit. Well, obviously, when paired with growth hormone, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's been shown as a very powerful anti-catabolic, and if it prevents muscle loss, then it hypothetically will increase net gain over time. So, insulin seems to be a, something that, from at least a medical health perspective, you should be doing if you have hyperglycemia from. Consistent growth hormone use in the off season, you should probably be using a long acting insulin to bring that mm -hmm. blood sugar back in line and to make sure that the carbohydrates are apportioned to the cells of your body, which includes muscle cells, which mm -hmm. is probably pretty anabolic. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, with at least the coaches that I've worked with, my my plan has, in the meantime, been to avoid insulin in the as as long as I can, even though my my blood sugar is raising to levels that I definitely can improve. So, I mean, when I'm not on Anything like a growth hormone screw to gog, you know, it's normally around 70, 80, but it always bumps up from 90 to 100 every time I'm running anything like that. So uh, in the meantime, we've just been trying to um, implement uh, uh, glucose disposal agents. Like? Like if you're, using other, if you're using anything other than metformin, it's just... Uh, not worth it? Likely a waste of money. Yeah, you think so? What do you think? What do you I'm think? not sure. I know that nothing really touches metformin, and for sure nothing touches insulin. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, Why are you resisting insulin? Um, well, I've had a lot of thinking about it. Um, before I answer that, what are your thoughts on IGF-1? I don't know anything about it. Mm. Yeah, just growth hormones is probably better at all this stuff than any of the actual you know, downstream regulators. So. Mm -hmm. I guess the thought is just since IGF-1 is also very insulin-like, so, you know. As a say, as like a, a replacement, or if you want to use it in like a small period of time to, I guess, utilize the carbohydrates, you're, you're increasing carbohydrates for a day or something, or for like a small period of time instead of insulin. I've heard that it can still be pretty beneficial. But back, but, back to his question, then why resist the insulin if you're okay with the IGF? I think, um, to be honest, like I understand that as long as I'm being smart about my programming and I'm consuming as many carbs as I need to on a, on a timely basis, then I shouldn't really have any issues when it comes to being getting hypoglycemic. But I just feel like doing, I have this like little worry about doing that. And the other side of it is like my thoughts around insulin and GH and the potential growth of things I might not actually want to grow. Like, what are your thoughts on, like, what are your thoughts on like the waistline with like overfeeding plus insulin and growth together. Here's some thoughts on that. You said a couple of things about that, yeah. Androgens also contribute to that effect. Mm -hmm. 
I think the biggest variable that people aren't considering is age. Okay. Your abdominal region gets larger with age. You store more intra-abdominal fat. Hmm. And I think comparing bodybuilders of yesteryear with bodybuilders of today and ascribing causes for their larger guts is a little interesting because most bodybuilders back in the day were just younger. I think Arnold quit when he was like 27 or something. Damn, did he really? Yeah. Yeah. So. What is going on? Yeah. yeah. And all of us are thinking that everybody's starting younger and younger these days. Oh, that's definitely not true. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know that many young bodybuilders actually. Mm. Not a lot, like, a lot around young people anyway. Right. <laughs> so I feel like the only difference really is it's just becoming more popular. But the age range is when people are starting is probably still close to the same. Yeah. I wonder. I don't have any stats on that. Um, but I think. <clears throat> the idea that growth hormone and insulin especially grow the waistline, it's interesting speculation, but it's nothing more than speculative as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some people have coached so many athletes that they can for sure tell it's a thing, but uh, I'm not sure if it's a thing. I just don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, coach Milo Sarchev, he has this guy doing seemingly plenty of insulin and growth hormone, and they're not dependably like huge gutted people. Um, mm -hmm. Ronnie Coleman was doing plenty of that shit before 2002, and he had a very small waist years after starting it. Hmm. So I don't know if it's something you have to wait years for or something. I'm not sure. I just don't know. <clears throat> Orals make your GI tract yeah, or your waist it. bigger, but that's approximate effect usually. So when guys are taking 800 milligrams of orals for six weeks before a contest, which a lot of pros do, yeah. uh, that is going to 800 be, milligrams gonna, of orals? Yeah, sure. seen a lot of crazy shit. What? And especially taking it when you're massing up. And you know, I've heard people taking D ball deep into a uh, like bulking, like when they're yeah. at the top of their mass. Right. The D ball is the thing that brings them the bulk, right? <laughs> yes. And th that level of food combined with that level of oral consumption is probably going to contribute a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. W what did you mean by like approximate for the for orals increasing their waist size? Yeah, so they'll they'll increase it uh, in the short term. I don't know if it's a long term effect. So if you take mm. a lot of orals, literally within several days, your gut will increase in size. If you take mm. fewer, in several days it will shrink down. So I think a lot of guys who take orals pre contest are going to have a big gut pre contest, uh, and it kind of looks like everything else is lean, but your stomach looks still bloated. It's a large, largely an effect of orals. Uh, and orals also give you that super crazy fullness if you take them properly, the right ones. So a lot of guys, and they tons of size, so they can't really give it up. They're not really interested in giving it up. They would have a slimmer waistline, but they might also have a physique that pops less. So I think a lot of people are into the heavy orals. Now, depending on which prep coach you hire or what your level of consent is, uh, mm -hmm. you could be end, you could end up on a lot of orals, and that will meaningfully increase your gut size. I mean, from fifty around 50-ish milligrams of Anavar, <clears throat> that I'll take pre-contest, I notice a difference. Uh, 50 megs of Anavar is a sick fucking joke compared to five, 600 megs of combo drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you mean you notice a difference in what? Exactly. Waist size. Like waist growth? Or? Correct, yeah. Just like my just waist gets bigger. Like wow, even just with 50 milligrams of Anavar. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Yeah. This is really cool info. I did not yeah. know about this. Yeah. Hey, Jared, you ever feel like even if your waist doesn't get smaller, it gets like harder? Like there's yeah. more stuff in there? 100%, yeah. yeah. It gets harder, okay. As in, like, inside? There's just more insides. You know, you can't pull as big of a vacuum and stuff yeah. like that. That's another one of the reasons the vacuum is kind of dead is because guys smash fucking 500 milligrams of yeah. pearls for weeks before their fucking show. And you just don't have any vacuum left at that point. But your pimples look cool, <laughs> which I think is bodybuilding mostly. Yeah, for sure. Oh, shit. Interesting. Gotcha. Okay. So I actually had this uh, interesting podcast with Tyan Cruz. You know, have you heard of Tyan? He's the guy who's like famous for bringing like DECA only to the public and then talking about how it's like hair safe. And so there's obviously certain people react differently. Um, so he and his cohort of of men are the ones that react badly to tes testosterone and also, you know, respond with like a lot of hair loss. So he's promoted DECA only as an option for them. And it's worked for a lot of those guys, obviously not for everybody. So there's a lot of interesting research he pulls up in, in our podcast. He said he did went deep into the research that people have not, obviously it would be Probably pretty smart for maybe it'd be a good idea for someone to actually do a video on this and like look into the research themselves. But he looked in and found that out of all the steroids, he claimed that Halo Testin had uh, studies showing that it does not affect um, your FSH and LH nearly as much as others. 
So you can potentially still upkeep your natural produ production of testosterone. And the, um, I guess the side effects to like your blood work and your, your uh, liver enzymes are nil. On Halo. On Halo. Mm. My man. Doesn't that sound crazy? Let's get fake Halo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't know what he's getting. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, I know a few people <clears throat> look at a lot of this research. Uh, the person who runs my pharmacology, his name is Joe Jeffrey. Have you followed Physique Collective or any of them? I don't think so. Do you know Vigorous Steve? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a couple podcasts with him. And I I'm, sure he's done some, I'm sure he's done some videos on that before. But he's definitely got to ask about that stuff. Physique Collective, if you can ever get them on a podcast, definitely guys ask about that stuff. Physique Collective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got mounds and mounds of files on his computer. Anytime I have a question, he sends me all the literature. He's like, here, read this. This is what I think about it. What do you think? He's very good about it. Wow. Yeah. It's very open-minded, too. Super. Okay. Interesting. Cool. So I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That sounds interesting. So do you guys feel like there's any, like, dangers that uh, you would say are really important to notify an audience, especially if they're younger and they're, like, bodybuilders that are starting up when it comes to PEDs? Even the use of insulin, like we were talking about, any things that just pop up and jump out to you? Chronic elevated blood pressure, the great killer. Yeah, you check your blood pressure often. If it's at all higher than the normative standard, one twenty over eighty, then you need to take medications to lower it. Mm -hmm. It's really funny to watch guys who take shitload of fucking vials and pills. Yeah. To be like, yeah, man, I don't think I need a blood pressure med. You wow. fucking moron. There's like six generation drugs that are like the most safe thing you can take and they don't even notice you're on averse it. to it like it's yeah, silly know, man. so if you already made a decision you started anabolics and now you're noticing those things it's it's a pill mm -hmm. that's it's the safest thing ever it's definitely all, safer almost than the needles. free the, the the needle going into your leg is almost as more dangerous than than the drugs yeah mm -hmm. just from an, something of a needle going into your leg like what could happen right yeah they're safe <laughs> which which pill are you talking about there's tons yeah, there's tons yeah there's tons are you talking about like telemisardin yeah, that's, telmisartan that's doesn't have a very profound effect on blood pressure, yeah. though it does have other health benefits, so it's probably mm -hmm. good to take. But uh, something like uh, lisinopril, amlodipine, those are the two I've been taking for some time mm -hmm. under the yeah. supervision of a doctor. Chlorthalidone is the one that... Yeah, chlorthalidone. There are, there are entire... Tr there's a tree of evolution yeah. of blood pressure drugs, and all the leaves of the tree and the flowers are modern and mm -hmm. cheap and ultra-effective and blood pressure cooks everything in your body until it breaks and dies yep. and if you have chronic elevated blood pressure it's real bad news so take care of your blood pressure and don't think if it's just oh it's 130 over 85 that's eh, all right i'm massing like yep sweet you're dying real slow while you're massing so don't do that <laughs> so um, there's no amount of blood pressure they can't with enough drugs bring down for you until you pass out so you can have low blood pressure and people like to do this thing strangely where they're like um do kind of what about ism to themselves where they're like, yeah, man, I should go to clean up my diet. Like why are those two mutually exclusive? Why don't you clean up your diet and start on blood pressure drugs so that you're, you know, right. Not killing yourself. Yeah. I think it's an unfortunate thing in today's society where we associate anything that's bad, you know, anything that's been bad in the past, you know, the word drug comes up. Right. So, I mean, it's very easy to generalize that for all drugs, but the yeah, and, and they're taking steroids. <laughs> they're taking steroids are the worst. Illegal. <laughs> what the fuck? In the United States. So. Yeah, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, steroids are way worse for your health than blood pressure drugs mm -hmm. or metformin but, or any of these other ancillary mm -hmm. drugs that make you healthier long term. You know. Yeah. 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 So blood pressure would be my big one to really, really look at. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call someone out for it, but. He honestly is a good example. So sorry, bro, if I didn't mean anything. But um, he does take gear. But then I'm like, uh, he worries about his hair. And I'm like, why don't you just mm -hmm. try like minoxidil <laughs> and together? I know there's some predisposed like side effects, but I myself have found um, I had anxieties about it before I started. I started, I have no issues and my hair is there. So I'm like, why don't you ever even consider it? And he's like, well, I just don't like taking other drugs. And I'm just like, well. And once you're like in the rabbit hole. <laughs> That's like saying you don't like to buckle your seatbelt, but you're on a plane going 400 miles an hour. I don't know, man. I think once you get on the plane, you got to buckle your seatbelt when they ask. Yeah. So if you don't really like to buckle your seatbelt, just don't get on the fucking plane. So if you don't like to take ancillary drugs to take care of your side effects caused by the drugs you're taking, don't take the drugs you're taking. 
Yeah. If you really are just squeamish and you know, for some moralistic reason don't want to take any more drugs, dope. See you in the graveyard. <laughs> I think that's a really important thing to preface for like today's society and like new bodybuilders. <laughs> it's like people don't really realize, no one really talks about not just, they talk about the diet, they talk about the training, the lifestyle, the things that you should keep into account, but they don't really talk about the ancillaries very much. And there's a lot of yep. ancillaries and a lot of actual pharmaceutical medications that could be important for you to take in order yep. to just make sure that you stay alive. Yeah, for sure. I know kids trying to get into it who, oh, it's only, you know, 40 bucks per month for a vial of test. Oh, that's cheap. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's $40 for that. Then there's yeah. other shit you got to buy. And then you're going to have side effects. It's going to happen. And then you're going to have to pay for those. And then you need insurance for health insurance. And then you need to get regular checkups and blood work and this and this and this. It's not $40 a month. Mm -hmm. Much, much more. But they see that and they're like, oh, hell yeah, I can do that. That's that's easy. Mm -hmm. So when you, until you know more about it, you should never hop in. Like I consulted with another person that's that knows a lot of shit. Is Team Evil GSP, Broderick Chavez. You know who that is? Mm. You should look into them too. They're very, very, very intelligent. But I consulted with him for a year as a natural pro on the phone, an hour every single week. So 52 hours in total. Wow. before i ever touched anything <laughs> wow yeah. that's sick yes. and i think that that's the route people are missing yep yeah. it's the I route i was missing very long natural bodybuilding career mike was natural for what 12 12 years before he ever touched anything i think that's if you want to do it right stop trying to hop on shit when you're under 25 and just enjoy the process of training enjoy the process of dieting if you want to be a bodybuilder, cut for a couple of bodybuilding shows or just cut as if you're going to do a bodybuilding show. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing all this shit, learn about that step you're planning on taking in the future. Yeah, I feel that. I, uh, I think I was natural for 11 years before yeah. or something. That's but, awesome. you know, this is just speculation. But um, of course, there's like anecdotal evidence that people say that this might potentially be a thing. But like when I started like around the age of, I think, 23 ish, maybe 22, 23 ish, I, I had a lot of like really bad mental side effects. Mm -hmm. And then the period of time that I took gear after the age of 25, I feel like those just were significantly lower mm. than before then. I don't really know. Maybe it could be psychological, especially now that I know about how people say avoid it before the age of 25 because your brain is still developing. But it's just something I noticed. Interesting. Oh shit, I keep getting those fucking side effects. I get, I get mental side effects are the only thing keeping me from doing like a gram more per week. Um, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> maybe you're still really intense ones. Maybe you're still 24. I feel 24 in my, like in my groin area. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even mean. Nice. <laughs> is that a Keon that makes you feel 24? 24 is legal everywhere, right? I'm allowed to make tons of jokes. Yeah. Just yeah. Legal everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you look 24 to me, Jared. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm much older. <laughs> Good older man. No, oh, fuck. See? Still that attractive. <laughs> <laughs> thought you were going to Leonardo me. <laughs> Wait, so uh, what do you mean by, um, if you don't mind me asking uh, more in depth about like the mental side effects that know. you've experienced? Yeah. Anxiety times a hundred. Oh shit. So if I take enough gear in high enough doses without taking any, for lack of a better term, nootropics, but also just some sort of brain health supplements to mm -hmm. offset that which uh, Mr. Jake Benson, mm -hmm. big call out there, has helped me with in the last few months, and it's transformed my prep completely. But uh, still with them to some smaller extent, but without them, I get uh, a couple unfortunate side effects psychologically. One is anxiety, which is not fun. It's not fun. It's not fun to be anxious, and anxiety both leads you to... Uh, not want to have anxiety anymore and because you experience that emotion with anxiety it multiplies itself so you're anxious about being anxious how's that for ashkenazi jew saying <laughs> hi i'm anxious oh no but uh the anxiety is every single second of every day i have it when i wake up at night to go to sleep um it's real old real fast and so for me it's uh makes the process of Taking drugs to get jacked and lean, extremely unpleasant. Um, now that we have my anxiety much more under control with various things, for example, such as CBD, ashwagandha, lion's mane. New pep. New pep. New pep not so for anxiety. It's more for keeping your brain growing. Brain, brain health. Yeah. What's new pep? New pep is a Russian pharmaceutical developed in the mid-90s. 
and it is a true nootropic, which means it reliably increases your intelligence and <clears throat> it, it, it increases the production of brain derived neurotrophic factor, nice. which is like the growth hormone of the brain sort yep. of. And so it does this reliably. It's no bullshit. It fucking works. I've been taking it for some time now, about half a year. Um, feels like I'm getting smarter. So that's really neat. Steroids mm. do reliably make you dumber, by the way. Yeah. Um, do you feel, does it BP especially? Don't you feel less of the mental sides? I, not from new pept, no, mm. but the CBD helps a ton mm. and ashwagandha and lion's mane. But to answer that, yes, 19 nor seem to be a lot more neurotoxic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Trend. It sucks because BP is kind of nice. It can make you feel full, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah lots full. of water retention. Sure. Dick's not so full, though. No, sure. I was going to say, it just yeah. makes, that's the only thing it does for me is make my dick not work. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 19 nors reliably are shown to kind of be a little more neurotoxic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now that the anxiety is uh, a little bit more controlled, I'm actually noticing something. So I thought that once I brought the anxiety down, which we really largely did, I would feel kind of pretty good. Mm -hmm. But the lack of anxiety has revealed the other predictable psychological effect for me of being on uh, steroids, which is uh, anger and aggression, rage. Um, He's punched me a handful of times. That's my cup of coffee. <laughs> Bam! Like old... Like, sometimes, sometimes it's nothing. You just... I'm your father. <laughs> I'm your father. <laughs> oh, That's crazy. Your daddy. But, um, so, yeah. Yeah, we get very, very angry and a special kind of angry. Um, I would call it righteous anger, kind of summed up in the emotional salience of how dare you. Like I'll read an Instagram comment and feel like, how dare you? Like I'll read a comment when I'm on plenty of shit and it's as usual, a highly disrespectful comment on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I want, I fantasize about meeting that person in real life, <laughs> walking up to them in the gym way too close to their face and be like, say something, you fucking pussy, say it say it and watch them cower and just relish as they cower. And then as they cower away, hurt them physically <laughs> so that everyone can see and then eat their fucking organs. <laughs> Total crazy shit. Now this is, these are thoughts that I have like <laughs> daily, sometimes nice. multiple times a day randomly. Um, and all I can think about is physical confrontation mm. and, I hate it. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just not a mean person. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know I'm having these thoughts. I'm like, gee whiz, here we go again. <laughs> so right. it's annoying as fuck. So the anxiety plus aggression just makes you have a real bad time. I haven't been able to engineer out the aggression, but okay. I figure I only have a few years left in bodybuilding. So thank fucking God that's coming to an end. <laughs> I'll feel be able to feel happiness. Uh, I guess a third thing too is um, when I'm on gear, plenty of it. Um, I have a very difficult time uh, perceiving some some normal human emotions, feeling them myself. It's like I'll walk out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll walk out um, um, and then look over sort of, I'll be on our, our property in Michigan, and I look over the tree line, these beautiful swaying green trees in the sun, and I'll be like, hmm logically that used to make me happy to look at but now i feel a combination of nothing and angry frustration wow and that's it and uh i have trouble like you know really happy emotional videos on instagram i have uh, i know what the people are feeling but i don't feel it anymore um, I have trouble being grateful. I have trouble being loving. Um, wow. I have trouble uh, with enjoying and giving physical intimacy. I don't mean fucking. Fucking's always sweet. But like loving someone is very difficult. I often find myself um, uh, thinking, have, trading off in my mind between faking it, which is, man, that's not a road you want to go down on. Yeah. And just calmly communicating to my wife that I'm sorry. I'm a cyborg for now. And she's used to it. So she's like, it's that time. What does she call it? Uh, the, the gears are grinding. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's not a good way to live. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get that too, but they don't know it because they're not sufficiently introspective. Mm -hmm. And then they're just pieces of shit to themselves and everyone around them. And then people are like, yeah, John's an asshole. Like, John wasn't that big of an asshole until he jumped on trend. And so... I think it's important for people to watch their anxiety levels, watch their levels of aggression. Yeah. And remember that there are different things going on in life and life can be pleasant if you enjoy it. Mm. And uh, that one single focus mentality is dope and all, but it can get quite old. Mm. I say probably the most important thing I can say on this podcast is if you're on super physiological doses of androgens 
and you have the opportunity to get into a physical confrontation that's not purely defensive, don't do it. And don't even talk to people in a confrontational way. Whenever I analyze confrontational situations, for example, if I'm at the grocery store and someone knocks into my cart and they look at me like I did it, I mean, like the first things that come to my mind are all things that are highly unethical and very <laughs> legal. And then I have to remind myself like, hey, you're broken. Your brain is broken for now. You cannot reason about this. Stop reasoning it about it. Do nothing and walk away. I have to remind myself of that because if I start reasoning it about it, I'm like, no, absolutely. I should kill this fucking guy. Fuck this guy. He did this to me. <laughs> I'm me and he's him and that's bad. And this just goes nowhere. So I think a lot of people really, when the steroids start speaking in the ear and being like, hey man, that guy disrespect you or whatever. They're like, yeah, yeah, he sure shit did. Like, like think about like gang violence and how that happens. Like, yo, he stepped on my Nikes. Like, you delusional fucking idiot. You could just save up your money and move out of the hood. You'd never have to deal with this again. But they're sucked into that mentality because it feels like, oh, I came up like this. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. But when you haven't been a violent, angry person for your whole life, and then you start taking steroids and you feel violent and angry, you can remind yourself that that's really not you. You know, like, there's kind of two different ways to tell you you're fucked with mushrooms before. I was literally about to ask you that. Dope. Absolutely. We'll get that to that. Just But like uh -huh. um, any psychedelic drug, there's kind of two ways to take it. One person will take it and we'll be like, dude, I'm fucked up. Uh, I'm clearly on drugs. And like, hey, want to drive? Like, oh, fuck no. And there's another way to take it where you're like, dude, I feel amazing. Like, okay. Do you feel like you have like connected to the secrets of the universe? You're like, yes. Mm -hmm. Finally, I can see like, no, you're high on drugs, you fucking idiot. So being on steroids, you have to remember like the anger, the aggression, the sense of entitlement and self-righteousness, mm -hmm. that's all like coming out of the needle. So when you feel it, breathe in, breathe out, understand that it's not really you and move on to doing something logical and peaceful so that you can keep your job, you don't hurt other people, and you can finish your prep without ripping someone's jaw off yeah. in, in the, the fruit and vegetable aisle of a Walmart. It does definitely make it hard in life since like, you know, there's a, there's a cohort of people and mostly the feminine that are just so... Um, Predisposed to making their decisions on like emotions and empathy. That Did you say mostly feminine? Mostly the feminine. Dunking on bitches on this podcast. No. I love it. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> emotions are great. Um, but um, <laughs> not when they're nasty. Not when they're nasty. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I can, it definitely makes it super hard, especially for men. Um, if they're doing that, it just kind of just ruins any ability for them to connect, especially if it's with their partner. So yeah, it's got to be more introspective. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, obviously, I mean, in my past as well, you know, I've met many partners of mine that have been more logical, but also I've met a lot that are just, I don't even know how to explain it. They're just so in tune with their emotions that like, especially if we get into the argument, anything that I find that is logically correct, I just can't even get past this barrier. It's like, if it affects you them, fucking with Latinas, no, nah, not really. Just kidding. Latinas. Jared loves you. <laughs> stabbed. Um, that's definitely a thing. Um, my wife and I make it a point to remind ourselves and each other that making decisions based on emotions is what children do. Making decisions based on calm logic is what adults do. If you want your life to unfold like a child's life would unfold, feel free to lean into the emotions. Just do what you feel like. If you want adult things to happen to you, you know, savings, vacation, retirement, productive work, no jail time, happy wife. then happy wife, happy life. <laughs> My wife's really Asian, so I can only get so much happiness. Am I allowed to stay? <laughs> can I do some Asian stereotypes on here? Or Please. Is gonna scan? Please. Ah, yeah. There's a stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> she shit like that all the time. She's, she's barely, she can barely she's speak English. She's like uh, my mom. <laughs> uh, with bodybuilding, so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're a doctor yet. <laughs> um, I feel like Cantonese is a, is a language where it sounds offensive no matter what they're saying. And you're mm. like, what the fuck? Did that bitch just insult me? She's like, no, she offered you an egg roll. The fuck? <laughs> anyway, so my wife and I are really big on like just trying to be adults about shit. And look, mm. we're not always adults, but usually when we have not nice things to say to each other, we're just like, hey, I'm in a mood. My apologies. And she's like, no worries. Let me know when you can chat. And I just fuck off. Um, I really don't like imposing my emotionality on other people. Like if you're moody, 
think hot bitches get this illusion, right? They're like, I'm just moody. Ah, like, bitch, the only reason people still hang out with you is your fucking asshole is beautiful and you got big ass titties, you dumb ass bitch. <laughs> if people really brought that shit to you and told you how they really felt, no one would ever fucking hang out with you because moody people are fucking insane. And it's okay to be moody, but you got to crush out the fucking bad moods and yeah, not let other people feel them. It's a part of being an adult in society. Let me, let me bring this up. Why are Asians so hypersocial? Because Asians don't make their fucking shit other people's problem. I'm Russian. We make the whole world fucking feel our problems. That's dumb as fuck. The Russian person's upset. You'll know about it real quick. Ooh, I hate everything. Shut up, Boris. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's good. If you were on steroids, if you're having a bad time in your head, and you're being aggressive, shut your fucking mouth and at best have a neutral facial expression when you're in public. Fucking walk around like this grimacing. They're just going to make steroids even more illegal. You dumb motherfucker. Jared and I go out of our way to be extra kind to people everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, because of two things. One, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Three things. Two, it makes you feel better to be kind to people. It actually raises your level of uh, kind of emotional positivity. And three, uh, we're not interested in perpetuating any more negative stereotypes than are already in the works. Yeah. And people see people that look like, well, all three of us, they're probably like, mm, are the average person like a little bit? Not scared, but like, oh. Yeah. it's like seeing a huge ass muscular dog off leash you're like is it gonna kill me it's okay <laughs> the, where's your owner and um i think it's good to be super kind at very least neutral so one of the things i i use i usually get it right <laughs> always is uh when i'm when i'm in gear especially is if you don't have anything nice to say or constructive to say just don't say it so like um I looked at uh, some Instagram comments on a post uh, I made a little while ago about another lifter that's in our kind of um, little forum and it's great technique and there's people on there just dunking on them. And the thing is like, whoever you are out there listening to this, there's a very high probability that I'm much better at making fun of people than you are. As a matter of fact, I can sit face to face with you and slam dunk on your entire fucking life. It'd just be real bad news. Things I wouldn't even feel comfortable saying that are just true about you. But if I'm oozing out that negativity i'm hurting someone's feelings and i'm hurting my own feelings because at the end of the day i'm like okay this fucking incel just talk shit about one of my lifters <laughs> i took the time to slam dunk on him easy when you got no profile photo you're fucking done to begin with <laughs> like you start the message with hello you don't exist the degree to your of your irrelevancy cannot be overstated Fuck. do you know how long i spent reading your comments negative delete block and then they sit there they got nothing but the kind of people that usually say mean things that are, you know, they're not having a good time themselves. And now maybe like their grandma came home and she's like, what do you want for dinner? And they're kind of tearing up because someone said something mean online. And I think about that. And I'm like, I don't want to contribute to that. Jesus Christ. Mm. So I try to stick to the, if you don't have anything nice to say, we're neutral and informative. Just shut the fuck up. I agree, man. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it comes with the territory. Like, especially you've had a big YouTube and everything. People are just going to feel like it's okay to disrespect you. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm just so not big on like the, well, the fucking, they disrespect me. So like, it's disrespect. I don't give a shit, man. You said some shit about me, whatever. I'm just going to, I'm going to make fun of myself with you. And then you don't got to worry. And but, then half the time, dude, when I yeah. do that, they're just like, oh, that's funny, Oh, it man. disarms people. That's funny. Yeah. yeah it They'd really disarms like, them big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. oh, Jared, you have a funny haircut. You're like, it is pretty funny if you think about stupid, it. You're like, oh, uh, uh, that's it. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another good strategy. Another thing is like when you become sufficiently uh, uh, social media famous, like I suppose the three of us are, there's just too many people out there to comment back mm -hmm. to, man. Can you imagine, like, did you think Bruce Springsteen wrote back to all of his haters? <laughs> right. Dear Gerald, <laughs> thank you for saying that my music sucked after the year 1989. <laughs> I do agree with you in part. The originality is gone. But luckily, $100 million goes a long way, and that's lots of cocaine. Signed, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. That just never happens. And today in social media, we just get a lot of, like, interaction from people we would otherwise never interact with. And, and they can, would never say the shit to your face. They're never in a million years. I've never had anyone say anything to my face. So I don't, yeah. As, 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 just, it's, it's, especially because you're Russian. Like, the fact that you have the same mentality is just like, damn, that's dope. Yeah. Because like every other Russian would be like, fuck you, come here, I'm killing you. Well, dude, that's <laughs> the thing, man, is like, so I'm so technically, I'm three quarters Ashkenazi Jew and a quarter Russian. And I can feel that quarter Russian. <laughs> Russians have a penchant for revenge. They do. Like, I'm not, and, and, and patience. And that's real dangerous. Like, if, um... If you go to the hood, you you get out of your car, slap the fucking biggest crackhead, crack dealer on that block across his face. Let's just say he's black for statistical purposes. <laughs> get in your car and drive off. 
there's a very good chance he's going to be like, ah, he's going to follow you. He's going to look up where you live. The Russian mentality is to find out who you are and then wait. Wait until a significant good event happens to family members in your life and then take a family member one by one from you. And you don't even know where it's coming. That's the kind of shit Russians think about. It's not fun to be Russian. <laughs> Russians never claimed it's fun. <laughs> so I got to be like, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Those ideas are not ideal. I'm just going to let them go off into the ether. Yeah. So one thing I learned from Jared that I think was really beautiful is you are not your thoughts. Because some people will have really fucked up thoughts. All of us do every now and again. You know what I'm saying? When your friend's grandma got up and you're like, damn, those are some big titties. I don't fuck with that. <laughs> Just kidding. No one's ever thought that. And I was like, how do they know they're in my head? Um, <laughs> them gilfs. <laughs> gilfs. Well, Asian gilf is really like a fucking 17 year old, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Asians don't age. Give me that nonsense. What are you, 17, kid? That's kind of what I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would absolutely not even try guessing your age. It would be irrelevant. 24, sure. 5, something. I quit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck was I saying? Um, you're not your thoughts. You're not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Everyone has fucked up thoughts every now yep. and again. Acting on fucked up thoughts makes you a child, right. child <laughs> slash convicted criminal. But um, it's okay to have weird thoughts, especially on gear, yeah. and just be like, oh, well, there's the trend again doing yeah. its thing. And, and once you've seen that cycle of you get crazy thoughts and then they recede, and you get crazy thoughts and they recede, it's a boring cycle, you know? Yeah. Like if you put a, if you put a, a, like a golden retriever puppy on a surfboard and I'll just let it bob in the waves, every time it goes up, it goes, oh, oh, oh. every time the wave goes down, it goes, oh my God, because yeah. it's new. You're on your fifth yeah. cycle of trend and fucking var and emotions go up. You're like, Man, there we go. I'm just yeah, this, like this sound like foo foo and weird and shit. But if you happen to catch this before you start your anabolic journey, but you're planning on doing it anyway, <laughs> uh, I fortunately had to be very introspective at a very young age, just because my childhood was fucking wild. Um, practice meditation, just like mm. ten minutes a day. Mm. Literally, you're just like noticing your thoughts. They're just things. They go away. They come. They go. And if you can do that, and by the time you get on anabolics and you start recognizing these thoughts and this anxiety and shit like that, you're gonna handle it so much fucking better. Because mm -hmm. I had, I was already super introspective, and my first time where I really felt anger when I was on anabolics, I was like, "Oh shit, this is I haven't That's felt this. this in a long time." Yeah, but I knew what it was immediately. Yeah, I was like, "I'm not going to act on this." Right. Yeah. Same thing as like logically getting your blood break before you even jump on gear. You know, 100%. finally you have like an initial point to compare to. Exactly. But most yeah. people don't. Sure, including me. But <laughs> At least get it after the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. did, and I passed out. Of course, the first time. Jared's bad with blood. Passed out the uh, first time, the second time, the third time, the first time I was injected. Wow. And then 60% of the time since then. Damn, 60% of the time. Getting blood. Still. Mm. He's seen Whoa, it. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> dude, that's crazy. I know, dude. You get a lot of anxiety before blow rig? I get a lot of anxiety on the day I got to shoot my ass, you know? <laughs> oh, like, shit. Fuck, I got to do this tonight. Shit. Has it gotten any better, though? It's gotten a little better, right? Because now it's sixty percent instead of since all the time. I started. This will be some good advice, I guess. Since I started backloading insulin syringes, not nah, really. It's not as bad. Okay, yeah, the insulin syringes are nice. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it every day because I just yeah, like doing that. Smaller. I, yeah, I do the yeah. same thing. Less, <laughs> less spikes in blood plasma. Yeah, yeah, less spikes for sure. Yeah. Um, plus, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I forgot. Mental yeah. bullshit, right? Huh? Some mental bullshit. I mean, yeah, the stable hormone levels help a lot, but that's not even related to what I was thinking about. <laughs> it's fucking went over my head sometimes. But um, uh, actually, kind of something interesting, but uh, my friend and I were talking about what we discussed with other people um, in terms of, it's kind of a weird conversation, but she, a friend told her that they believe that the nectar of life is... Trend. Real, trend. Not good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is fearlessly feeling the most you can. Um that's pretty smart. While reacting minimally. And that's pretty wise. I was like, yeah, I, I listened to that. I'm like, I think that's pretty wise. I, I do resonate with that, but I think uh, I would add on one thing. So I told her, I really truly believe that the nature of life is fearlessly feeling the most that you can to the greatest extent while reacting minimally, but responding with love. Because reacting and responding is different, right? And it's hard to choose a response, which is like a little, a higher level of consciousness versus like, especially when you're running fucking what a grandma trend or something, right. <laughs> um, it's a lot harder Fuck. to choose a response of the reaction. I mean, all this is like branches of like, uh, just branches of meditation and uh, mindfulness. So all this is just like 
Buddhist practice, basically. So mm-hmm. tons of mindfulness practices. And the, even that quote in itself is, and the one he gave you are basically summed up in mindfulness. So mm-hmm. it's a good practice to get into. Have you ever like, um, cause I know you talked about psychedelics before. Have you ever like tried to take it in order to like, I guess maybe even if just momentarily help you feel those feelings you felt like you were lacking since you've jumped on? No. Um, when you come down, I don't take psychedelics during peak dosages. <laughs> uh, that's a, a, yeah. Dark trip or no? No, they're great. Oh, that's great. No. Yeah. Um, I typically don't try to take drugs to escape things. Just to have fun with your friends. Um, <laughs> just to have fun with friends. Um, it's nice to feel some emotions. I will say I'm a, way down. now a regular THC user, a couple times a week I'll, um, in the evenings and weekends, I'll use edibles with THC in them to definitely feel some feelings. Um, for me, uh, THC has a pretty profound, uh, anxiety reducing effect when I'm on a ton of gear, mm-hmm. when I'm on TRT, it has no anxiety reducing effect because I just get freaked out that I'm on weed. <laughs> when you're on uh, TRT? Uh, when I'm on TRT, I don't really have an anxiolytic effect from weed now. Uh, okay. But well, yeah. when you're on TRT though, you also don't really feel that much. Uh, it's like your anxiety is a lot on, reduced on my, of gear. I, I'm barely anxious at all if I'm not on gear. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of neat because now I have kind of a, something to take about six to eight hours of my anxiety away. Unfortunately, it all, all makes me mentally disabled. <laughs> so I can't work. I can't drive a car. Like a giant child. Damn, you get high as fuck. I'm, I'm absolutely uninterested in doing any drugs unless it's uh, I'm getting high as fuck. <laughs> I don't fuck with a little bit of mushrooms. I don't fuck with a little bit of fucking weed. 70 yeah. migs of berries. Yeah, 30 to, 30, to, 30 to 60 migs of THC oh, usually Christ. will do the trick. Uh, a lot of a lot of people take way more than that, but uh, it's a solid dose. Yeah, it's a solid dose. Um, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm just you know, if you ever see me when I'm fucking high, I'm like, there's not a whole lot of Doctor Mike left. Well, in some sense, there is, um, but I just um, don't trust my reasoning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do have some very uh, so I get very generative. I get lots of ideas when I'm high. Yeah. And uh, some fraction of them turn out to be very good ideas. Yeah. Uh, some fraction of them are nearly total nonsense. Or, <laughs> uh, less eloquent restatements of earlier ideas I already had. Right. So if I have really good work-related ideas or ideas about philosophy when I'm high, I'll write them down on my phone. And then later when I'm sober, next day, I'll look them over and go like, yeah, that was good. Ooh, that was dumb. That was good. That was dumb. And so I'll keep the ones I like. I was about to say, because I actually just remembered you had like a whole nother channel or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I listened to a Chris, you know, a Modern Wisdom podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. where you literally just talked about that channel correct yeah, yeah. The people were very disappointed <laughs> Where, where's the training Talk stuff about exercise <laughs> fucking idiot daniel lane sort of have a whole other channel for that but yeah yeah no uh, jared and i are really big in philosophy and uh we're like uh you could say almost religious about right. singularity stuff sure, yeah we could, uh, we could just talk Put talk as up. extensively or not extensively as you like about spirituality and shit like that Dude, we have we have a quite odd take probably an unusual take maybe one you've never heard before about but why unusual etc oh boy <laughs> should i just kick it yeah that's before let's the psychedelic point <laughs> yes outside of guided therapy psychedelics if you've been told it's, it could potentially help like some sort of anxiety depression mm-hmm. the way you should probably approach psychedelics is i'm about to ha- get high with my friends i'm going to be losing my mind for like a few hours it's just to have fun there's nothing nothing that you're telling yourself while you're on psychedelics is real mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just happening yep. and you're gonna have fun with your friends and then when you come down and this is a big point in why i do them when you come down, you gain this massive appreciation for what the fuck is going on around you because you just lost your mind for six hours. So like, we'll start coming down together. One time we were sitting out at a fucking park bench in Philadelphia coming off of mushrooms. And I was like, damn, this is one of my best friends. We live in Philadelphia together. Yeah, that's not We have great part. jobs. Great job. <laughs> well, even best Philly, friends. Even Philly. Philadelphia. Even, great job. Even Philly is like, yeah, I live in place. this cool city. Yeah, yeah. It's neat. You can have an appreciation for things you normally don't. Almost. Well, I hate it. I hate to live in we Philadelphia. Went to, we went to Mumbai twice and we still have an appreciation for it. Right. And so it's just, that's the way you should probably approach it. When, mm-hmm. you, you, when you start getting your shit back together after you've been on a six hour trip, right. you're like, holy fuck, my life yep. is good. Mm-hmm. Not to uh, not to like uh, promote any drug use or anything, but then again, all these three substances are utilized for are. psychotherapy they, right they now. Yes, correct. But the way I see it and what I've experienced from my past is that for Molly, ketamine and psychedelics, Molly, like after doing a really good experience with them, especially in a place that's like a setting that's productive, or constructive for me and my mental um afterwards 
Molly, I always feel more connected to love. Ketamine, I'm always more connected with to acceptance. And then psychedelics, I'm always most connected to um, to uh, appreciation. Yeah. Gratitude. That's I cool. definitely felt the appreciation part. And it's long lasting, which is the coolest part. Yeah. Like months. Last months. Yeah. yeah. I'm due for a fucking reset, baby. <laughs> God, you want to do the rest on mushrooms? You want to do rest <laughs> You got any? I do. <laughs> I know what we're doing tonight. <laughs> Heard Brad sells mushrooms. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Brad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're outing dealers now. <laughs> <laughs> People just like to joke about Bradley Martin all the time, but no, he's a really great guy. Bradley Martin just jokes. If he was selling drugs on the side, I'd be like, "Don't you have a lucrative gym?" Then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was actually kind of curious, though. Um, is there any? Do you feel like there's any compounds in particular, or any like protocols in particular that have caused you to feel, I guess, the most anger and anxiety? Trend, trend. Yeah. It also gives me a fever, mm. night sweats. Trend fever. Trend yeah, nineteen nores in general, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the effect on my physique is profound. But I, I don't go over 100 milligrams of trend per week anymore mm. for the last four to six weeks of a prep. Mm. Jared can take a little more for a little. Yeah, long. I think after like as far as like chatting with Joe, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. I'll send all this shit to him. <laughs> after like 80 to 90 milligrams a week, I think the glucocorticoid receptor, which is the biggest thing that you're getting from trend, is that is that uh reduction in cortisol because it actually binds to that receptor site. It's the same anabolic processes. It's not any more anabolic. You just look harder and stuff like that because your cortisol is lower. And I think anything after like 80 to 90 milligrams a week, you're not really getting any more of a benefit. So all these people running like 400 milligrams and shit, just do more fucking tests or do more primo. Stop doing that. Yeah. It's insane. Right. Because you're just getting more pissed, more psychological side effects that you, then you right. need to. So um, I, I don't do much either. I, 150, 125, 150. What do you say about cortisol being lower? Uh, it's binding to the glucocorticoid receptor. Mm. That's its extra thing. Mm -hmm. Like some of these anabolics have this extra thing that they do. Yeah. Primobolin is shown to have the least amount of side effects. Mm -hmm. Like Anavar is a very, uh, it's been used for so long. It has low side effects relative to what it is an oral steroid. Uh, whereas Winstrol and things like that are pretty much harsher for your liver yeah. enzymes, things like that. Um, so they all have, you don't just throw shit in to throw it in, right. throwing it in based on certain profiles. And the reason Trin is so popular is because of that exact mechanism. And that's why people are like, oh, I'm so much more veiny. I'm so much more hard looking on, on Trin. Um, so it's just not a good idea to do a shitload just to do it. You got to right. actually put these things in play because they serve a fucking purpose, mm -hmm. which is why whenever you're super stressed, you're super dieted, you're training hard as fuck and you're eight weeks out and you see a lot of coaches now, they're like, at eight weeks out, that's when we put the Trin in. And they start looking harder and mm -hmm. cortisol goes back down. If you feel like any of the medications that we spoke about today may benefit you, such as BPC-157, GH acritoglog, such as tessamorelin, IGF-1, oxandrolone charche, semaglutide, then you can obtain these from Trans and HRT, and the link for that will be in the bio. If you feel like you're experiencing symptoms of low testosterone, such as depression, anxiety, lack of motivation, as well as lack of sex drive, then you can get this checked out as well by getting your blood work done at Transcend, and they will provide you expert medical analysis. Transcend HRT has worked with many professional bodybuilders and pro athletes, such as Thor Bjornsson, Phil Heath, and Jeremy Buendia. And if you feel like this podcast has any relevancy to you, I do believe that this clinic will provide of great benefit to you as well. This is something that I'm trying to express on this podcast because, you know, my podcast is called Transparent, mm -hmm. but um, sometimes that can, I think there's some people that uh, may have like a bad connotation for drugs get turned away from the name before they like listen to the podcast, right? But something that I've always wanted to promote <laughs> is having some kind of knowledge and just some like awareness for people that don't know anything about it, especially before they started. Well, we've named dropped the fuck out of some smart people on this podcast. Nice. So, yeah, cool. Because yeah. my issue was... I competed in nine shows, like six of them, six to seven of them were natural. I was really depressed. I would wake up in the middle of the night crying because I thought I could dream, I dreamt I won my pro card, but I didn't. Oh no. Like so I was sad. Um, and then finally, like after my coach started pushing like some pills to me, cause I didn't want to take steroids. He did push some pills and he's like, oh, this is an AI. It's going to make you drier on stage. You'll look leaner. I, I was like, fuck it. I'll take it. So I, at one point I was natty, literally just on like a Rimidex and Whoa. like Novadex. Yeah. Um, and, um, that was like a gateway to me ending up taking Halo Test and, and Winstrol 
Um, and the first time I took halotestin, I didn't even realize that the halotestin was a steroid. I thought it was another one of these pills. That oh, boy. Them. It's the so, steroid. You went so, right to the hardest one. <laughs> yeah. Lost my natty cardias app. <laughs> Fuck. But um, because of that, you know, I had a, a whole roller coaster of just emotions and pain and just to fucking like yeah. wondering like, fuck, did I fuck up the rest of my life? So imagine the female hormone experience. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which is so, why. So I, I kind of want to like, you know, <laughs> at least provide some awareness for this and like Dope. let people also know that there's a lot of like ideas. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of viewers in the industry kind of have this perception that through like all these blogs and things that like all bodybuilders, all open bodybuilders and professional bodybuilders take grams and grams and grams of gear. And like, you have to do that to be on stage. But I truly believe just like in any drug, like Adderall, anything that you're prescribed, especially every drug has like a sweet point. And after a certain point, you know, there's a certain level of, um, you know, what is it? marginal returns that just mm -hmm. reduces and reduces and reduces until mm -hmm. it's not even beneficial for you. So, yeah, especially like, you know, taking too much trend and then you can't even sleep and where are your gains going to be? You're not going to be making any. Totally. So like, and also a hundred milligrams of test, a hundred milligrams of TRT versus 200 milligrams of TRT. There are guys that are prescribed both. So who's to say that, you know, one guy on 500 milligrams of test versus another guy on a gram of test might not act or might not respond similarly. It's hard to say. So I just want people to like get out of their heads that they have to take this much gear and like realize like maybe it is a smart idea to titrate up and do some research, like do experiments on yourself so you don't wreck yourself. Yeah, what it's you're delayed. describing is literally the reason we respect the people that have helped us so much is they prescribe to like using drugs in the safest way possible, like more safer use out there than what has been in the past. So they literally, everything they do and prescribe is based off of that. And like, well, this drug wasn't approved for human usage. So maybe we shouldn't put that in. Like, we're not gonna use this, we're not gonna use that. But these things have a lot of data on them. So let's try those out and let's see how you respond. Lots of blood work, things like that. So what you're describing is exactly that, which I think is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's dope. People are lucky to have your podcast around. Instead of just arranging a bunch of trend needles on the ground and jumping onto them. <laughs> Oh, needle up so that you get all the trend. <laughs> anyway. Would you like the spirituality conversation? He's skipping it. Just, he's skipping it on purpose. <laughs> so we got to get to the real shit. <laughs> Man, I'm so curious though, honestly, personally, because I'm, I, uh, I've had like my own, like in a way, like a spiritual journey and stuff. I grew up Catholic. And then there was one point where like through like past high school and everything, I felt like I like just didn't believe in anything. Mm. I was very skeptical. And then moved to San Diego and had a bunch of different experiences, you know, had some best friends that passed away. And I feel like I, if I didn't believe something, uh, it wouldn't have affected me in a positive way as it did. So Interesting. spirituality is something that I hold very dear. So I'm really interested, but I don't know. Do you have like a, a spark notes version? Shut up, Jared. <laughs> God, this is going to be weird. We do have a spark notes version. Yeah. Okay. We think that the universe is a giant integrated machine and it, it grows us like fruits and flowers grown on a tree hmm. but the tree branches of the universe are weaving in a predictable direction towards increased complexity one of the ways that this is expressed is an increased overall intelligence in biological systems and now in technological systems except technology gets smarter much faster than biology. It took billions of years for humans to evolve to be as smart as we are today. It took a hundred years for technology. modern mechanical systems to evolve to uh, now officially in 2024, rivaling human intelligence. And per a few philosophers and now near consensus in the AI community, what's coming in the next several decades is the ascent of super intelligence, machine systems, to think on a level of complexity like we do compared to ants. And our maybe biggest goal, Jared and I, our biggest spiritual purpose is to help in any way we can and hope and dream to see or at least think of the day when machine intelligence is unleashed upon the world in its fullest. <laughs> so TLDR, if the Terminator 2 Skynet thing broke out, we'd be on the machine side. <laughs> the machine Matrix, side. also machine side. Plug me back in, baby. Fuck the real world. Oh, shit. But, but in honesty, it's another way of saying that yeah. the 
really value so, calm, logical reasoning. And we think that one of the smartest things you can do is try to become smarter. And if there is a problem you can't figure out, try to look to who the smartest people or machines are, see if they can't do a better job. You know, why is the why is the biggest question we're always asked, which is why there's so many branches of religion and things of that nature. And uh, I, the universe is a solvable problem, but humans aren't going to solve it. And I think the second super intelligence is born it'll be like 10 seconds later it'll be smarter than the smartest human to have ever existed by tenfold and that that's going to solve a lot of why hmm. and that's it's going to cool. ask why is we haven't even we haven't asked, thought of you know? talk to your dog about moral salience of various trade-offs and your dog's going to hear his name <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is how humans treat most problems mm -hmm. like climate change for example you got right-wing folks that say take my fucking rights god damn it mm -hmm. and you got greta thunberg who's like everything is terrible and everybody dying and both of them are just not reasoning about the problem yeah. because the problem is quite complex but machine super intelligence will no doubt arc re-architect our yeah. planetary climate to be whatever we need it's not all too crazy it's not crazy not when chat there. gpt is real Five, <laughs> ten years ago, Jared and I were yeah. on the same track, and people just thought we were straight yeah. up nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the shit we were talking about, like, in the future, you're going to be able to literally just type down a video you want to watch, and it'll just play. And now look what's happening. Now, now that's yeah. last week. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I just can't wait till Sora and those video models start fucking rendering porn, baby. I ain't never leaving <laughs> my house again. Just a full immersion porn? Jared like, Feather as a natural. <laughs> 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 taking a shit. <laughs> onto my chest enter <laughs> <laughs> oh man as a natural is crazy Fucking yeah Christ. except yeah. except except sora the, the video it makes from that it's just like a guy being like hello you need jesus <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> i do jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. nice it's a very uh bro bodybuilder engineer um view for sure. Yeah, Spirituality, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> i think there's some kind of correlations between engineers and bodybuilders for some reason all of them are people that like mechanical systems that can be altered to elicit a certain function also the search for perfection yeah it's dope mm -hmm. yeah. if you see a, like a very well architected computer system working as it's supposed to there's a beauty to that and if you see your body working and looking like it's supposed to after many years of working on it there's uh there's something um something dare i say renaissance-esque about it uh leon da vincian about it you know like it's a thing yeah leonardo da vinci was also into bodies and shit and muscles uh, and he was also the first man to draw what looked like a prototype for a helicopter although i like to think i'm the first man who's stuck three dildos inside of his never mind <laughs> <laughs> wrong podcast uh <laughs> it's four, it was four. <laughs> all right are you guys down to uh, jump to the q a because you guys got a lot well, of fucker, I thought this was Q&A. Yeah. No, this was me. This oh, was me shit. Oh, a yeah, member, yeah, yeah. member Q&A. Yeah, the, the, the member Q&A. Yeah, a little audience Q&A. Yeah, let's get a few. And a fuck ton of questions. A fuck ton of questions. All right. So we're not going to get through all of them, but um, my my boy Tony also put up some questions on there because uh, you met him at Zoo. Uh, Tony. Hey, Tony. Was he Italian? Tony. Was he the nanny guy that came to Tony Evangelista. He's a, uh, he looks a lot younger than he is, but he's like 40 years. I know who Eva Evangelista is. <laughs> is this a porn star? Yes. Okay. And it's one of the only porn stars named. I, knew. I, I don't know if he hand. just looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's her real name. I kind of <laughs> doubt it. Yeah. He's wondering, um, do you do like, do you do more short or long cycles? Like how do you lay out your structure in your cycles? Long. Longer. Long. Touch All head, like 12 mm -hmm. to 16 weeks of muscle gain phase is one cycle. Mm-hmm. All of pre-contest, 16 to 20 weeks, 12 to 20 weeks is one long cycle. And we layer in more and more shit as we go and sort of harsher shit and then orals at the end and ta-da. Yeah. No short cycles. For me, I have a real problem with transitions. Um, when my gear is stable, I feel okay. When I'm elevating, I feel terrible. Anxiety, all that shit multiplies. Yeah. So I have like a settling point thing. So the fewer of these things I can do, which is for me, short cycle would be like, ah, I'm okay, ah, back down. <laughs> yeah. So I like it long and very small adjustments so that I can cook. cook, cook. I just want somebody to cut out. I have a real problem with transitions. And yeah. I don't like these people saying that they're XYZ when they're really ZYX, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Honestly, I'm so glad you guys just said that because I've said that to so many people about like why I would prefer long rather than yeah. just constantly changing. Um, I, f- I feel like you guys are the first ones that have just said it out right, to be honest. <laughs> huh. so, hmm. Definitely feel the same way about like just any hormone fluctuations is where all the side effects I encounter. Yes. If I'm yes. stable, I fucking feel. Which is fine. why it's smart that you do the backloading shit too and mm-hmm. pin more frequently. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's just smarter. <laughs> this is fucking such a bro question. Uh, favorite compounds and, and why? Shut up. I want to answer in the bro voice. Fuck, <laughs> fuck duck bro. <laughs> fuck pumps. <laughs> my, my favorite compound. Just in primo to moderate amount because it's the safest thing and it grows just as much muscle as anything else. Me too. Yeah, primo. Primo is God's serum. Yeah, same. I'm on that right now. All right. Cool. Nice. Um, this is being filmed in the UK. <laughs> yeah, <it's> legal. <laughs> For legal purposes. And then uh, I guess he has the thoughts on GH and dosage and then also off season versus contents prep. Jesus, it's way out of my wheelhouse. A dosage, you should start at two to three units, probably in the evening. As you mature and your coach and doctor decide you're eligible for more, you do more frequent daily injections of still two to four units at a time. Uh, a good candidate time for growth other than uh, if you wake up to pee, you can shoot in the middle of the night. So you get two spikes. So mm-hmm. take growth in the evening before you go to sleep. Take it in the middle of the night when you wake up to pee. Just have mm-hmm. your needle preloaded and jab it in. Go to sleep. If that ain't you, the morning before your cardio, maybe fasted cardio would be really great. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes in the pre-workout period, uh, is another opportune time to shoot growth. So you can end up going to several, maybe three administrations of two to four units. And that kind of lays out your top end, how much growth you should be taking. Okay. Pre-contest versus off-season, I think is a calculation of how much insulin you're taking to offset your sugar, blood sugar levels, and also how you feel with some level of bloat. Um, but uh, as long as you're pulling your growth hormone a few days or weeks before you peak, because it'll drop a lot of body water. Um, I don't think they're, I'm not aware of any compelling reason to take more or less pre-contest versus off-season, although financial constraints are such that maybe pre-contest is the better time to take either any growth or more growth because it's going to really show itself. Although I say yeah. growth works over very long time scales. Right. So you take growth for a month, and then, I don't know, I think it kind of look better. But uh, you I take think, it for half a year and it'll have a notable effect on your physique and your training yeah. and everything else. The only big difference there is uh, pre-contest first when you're massing. Like I want to sleep better when I'm massing up. In pre-contest, I like to use it for added fat loss purposes. So that's just like an administration in the morning versus nighttime. So if you're on anything less than two units, like you could just shoot two units in the morning or two units at night, pick which one. For me, it's pre-contest like when I'm trying to lose fat or like re- during contest prep, fat loss, morning with like the fasted cardio, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Whenever you're massing up and you're trying to get good sleep and you're trying to really recover, nighttime. Yeah, that's, uh, that's if you're under two units, you know what I mean? Yeah, ideally you take both. But uh, right. I say pre-bedtime growth hormone makes a lot of sense because it does increase the depth and quality of your sleep. Mm-hmm. And it can help put you to sleep gently, not like a sleep drug or anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, growth hormone uh, can be taken, I think, in those kinds of um, structures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My um, my preferred route is also before bed, but uh, my issue is sometimes like trying to make sure that I don't consume carbs like at least like a couple hours before bed or consume too much food, especially when you're trying to fit in five to six meals a day. I'll say like uh, if you're taking a long acting insulin like Lantus, that's no longer a concern. And I'll also say that as long as you're monitoring the blood sugar regularly, you're lean and active, 10,000 plus steps per day five to six days of training if it's lean enough all year round to see abs and veins realistically as long as you're keeping a blood work in check hyperglycemia secondary to growth hormone is a wildly exaggerated thing yeah wildly hmm. yep. you're so jacked and so active that you spend most of your time hypoglycemic three hour period where you're slightly hyperglycemic isn't going to do shit now, if you're a fat fuck, let's just say an equipped off-season power lifter, <laughs> and you're at 22% body fat, your daily activity consists of driving to the Wendy's and back. Yeah, somebody's got to turn the wheel. Nope, unless you have self-driving and you don't even do that. That's true. And then, uh, you know, you don't do any cardio and your training volume is composed of singles and triples. You might have a rough time with hyperglycemia, but if you're lean and very active and very muscular, as long as you're keeping tabs on that stuff... I wouldn't worry about it too much. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Johnny Sills 
asks, um, what's his name? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny what? Johnny Sills. Sounds like incel. <laughs> okay. Johnny. Johnny Sins. Ooh. Johnny Sins. Johnny Sins is a handsome man. Is that what he is? I would assume so. He has a, f- a nice body. Yeah. yeah. Pretty jacked. I wonder if he's a, uh, I wonder if he's natural. Probably an RP. I actually had a, po- I had a podcast with a porn star and he told me like 80% of the dudes there are not natural in porn. That's what's up. Really? They're really? not they, that impressive they, looking. They all take huh? at least. Well, yeah, you got to take that shit just to keep up with the fucking filming schedule. Bro. That's not <laughs> a fucking twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude, the way that he trains is he goes to the gym and does supersets the entire time and he only has like 20 rests, 20 seconds rest because he says he needs to keep going. And yeah. Like, that's sports specific training right there. Yeah. <laughs> you got sports science figured out. I usually just fuck for as long as I can and then make excuses. Nice. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. Sorry, baby. Lower back pumps. D-ball. You know. <laughs> I mentioned I was a bodybuilder. She's like, yeah, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, a lot of people love to like, love to pin their cardio on like sex and say, you know, they do enough. But I think the average sex time is like five minutes or something. Damn. That's a lot of cardio. That's a lot of cardio. My average is so much lower, dude. <laughs> For cardio or sex? Sex. Sex. <laughs> I'm married. I don't have sex. <laughs> I have a lot to look forward to. Yay. All right. Um, Johnny Sin says uh, you <laughs> definitely you promote a lot of um, like stress hypertrophy and slow training. What do you think of Sam Sulek's training? I think uh, Sam Sulek's training is, is quite good. He's uh, using large ranges of motion. He's trying really hard. He gets close to failure. He's not underdosing his volume. So he's growing a lot. Could he do a little nipping and tucking around the edges? Yes. Could he slow down as his, his eccentrics? Yes. Could he get the deeper stretch? Yes. Could he take a pause at the bottom to make sure that he's mitigating his injury risk as much as possible, being that he's on gear? Yes. If he did all those things, it would simply cause him better results and more muscle growth. And probably less pain. Um, mm-hmm. Long term. Less, fewer injuries, less pain, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So... And less need to, by a small margin, do as much gear for similar results. Mm, gotcha. Nice. Yeah. And uh, another thing is, oh, how not nice do I want to get? <laughs> Sam Sulek has never claimed to be anything that, than a person who just works out and loves it. Yep. Yeah. So looking to him as an expert is a violation of even his own ethos. Yep. Like, if you were like, Sam, you're my expert, he'd be like, what? I'm <laughs> just inspirational. I'm just and I, like I know a few things, but... Yeah. Do what you like. Yeah. It does not exactly constitute detailed advice. Yeah. And so I just wouldn't think much about Sam Sulek's training. I think if you watch his videos and get he has a very ASMR voice, it's nice to listen to. And it's l- l- wonderful to see that level of inspiration. And it's cool to follow someone's journey. I just wouldn't try to be learn a ton from him because he's, I don't think he's learned a ton. He's like fucking 22 or some shit. Yeah. You wouldn't want to have listened to me when I was 22. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, Sam's really dope and it's inspirational and all that good shit, but, uh, would not overthink his methods because he is on record as saying that he does not overthink his methods. You want someone who has overthought their methods back in front, then they can talk in a way that will help you about which methods you should and shouldn't be doing. Also, I'm not aware of how many people Sam has coached, but I assume it's close to zero. I don't really comment a lot about various nuances because I don't coach much. Jared coaches a ton, so he knows a lot. But uh, yeah, it's like um, almost in a sense, like asking like uh, fucking the, the drummer from Grateful Dead what he thinks about life. Like they, they pay him to do this. Not, not, <laughs> the not to think about it. You know what I mean? Like, they uh, I'm actually kind of curious in, though. Ins- insert any drummer here, really. <laughs> not to offend drummers, but you know, it's like it's like if you ask me about women's fashion, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Just make shit up. So if someone hasn't dedicated a long time to intellectualizing the process, asking them questions may be a bit curious. Mm. Nice. I do think there's just some people though, like Sam and Larry, that even through all of Larry's injuries, they're just fucking built like titanium. What makes you think Sam is built like titanium? I think I just assume because he can just he can just throw weight around and I I don't know about any injuries. Oh wait, I guess he's had an injury recently. That sucks. I don't remember what it was though. Something, yeah. I think it was his back or something. I think Larry's been hurt too, hasn't he? Larry's been hurt like a thousand times, dude. <laughs> Strange titanium. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow he can still keep going and lift the same. I, I got shoulder impingement in both my shoulders, and um, now I'm bench pressing about the same as I did in college <clears throat> like in seven years ago. But with maybe better technique, maybe? Better technique, for sure. Good, good. <laughs> for sure. No, they're asking both 
bodybuilding and philosophical philosophical questions. Oh, we'll take them both. Uh, Oliver e asks, how successful are you? Or have you been with the ladies actually since you're so self-deprecating about it? <laughs> <laughs> when I... Uh, I think having a wife is about as successful as you can be. I think it's pretty successful. It's a different kind of success. I'm having issues. By the time that I had enough game to rack up numbers, I was tired of racking up numbers and I retired. Um, there's a certain feeling when a person gets when you're, it's a, once you figure out game, it's a system like anything else. You just run the system and watch things happen. Yep. One important thing to do when you're trying to run game is detach yourself entirely from the outcome. You run game on hose. doesn't fucking matter if they say yes or no. Law of large numbers. <laughs> Enough to say yes. yes. Jerry has his own game that he might in, intervene with. But um, I got to a point where I wasn't doing crazy numbers, but like is I could have sex when I wanted it sort of thing. And um, the thing is, in most females, whether or not they intellectually are aware of it or like to admit it, um, hookups hurt them deeply. And they almost all women, almost all the time, you think I'm just getting my dick wet. If they think I'm just getting wet too, but maybe I'll catch feelings. You get enough people catching feelings and you start breaking a lot of hearts and it, you realize that, uh, it does not feel so good. That nah, doesn't feel good at all. And also you realize that like the marginal utility of having a human body to use as a masturbatory device starts to not be much higher than using your hand. <laughs> and you're like, you know, this is fun and all, but, um, and then also for, in my personal case, um, I, I, I dreamt, uh, a long time of having, um, a partner, a wife who I could really take really good care of. And that was romantic from a young age about that. And so when I got uh, settled enough in my career and, and met Crystal, uh, I kind of just at some point I was like, yeah, this is it, man. And so that's probably like, you know, I'm, I'm probably, I have better game now than I ever did, but I, it's immoral for me to use it on anyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. So no, I never got a fuckload of pussy, but I wasn't doing too bad towards the end. However, to be complete about the answer, when I was in high school and most of college, I mean, I was dry as a fucking bone, scared of myself, scared of everyone else. I had like negative game. Like if you were about to get pussy and I joined the conversation, you weren't getting pussy either. She just walk <laughs> away. Uh, so yeah, the self deprecation comes from a, a very long reality of not getting laid. Mm -hmm. And then a equally long reality of having plenty of shit. But, uh, I absolutely know how it feels to be intimidated by women. I know how it feels to uh, just like see people who are getting laid and be like, what is it that they have that I don't? Uh, the answer is six inches in both dimensions, height and dick length. <laughs> no one, no takers. Um, that's my story. Jerry, you, uh, you were always chock full of that shit, weren't you? Must have. Pussy. Nah. No. <laughs> you, you, uh, no. Let's get some more exercise questions going. <laughs> Jerry is still in the game. Funny. So it's like, it's like when you're, uh, when you've retired from special forces and it's been long enough, you're like, yeah, I'll talk about all my ops. But if you're like in special ops, like, what do you do? You're like, ah, deliver ice cream to children. Imagine, nice. Do you mind if I ask how old you are? 30. One. As, as of yesterday. As of yesterday. Happy birthday, birthday John. John. Well, thank Don't you. tell yeah. him that. He that's that's real not, weird for a white, a white man to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. You probably. That's why my eyes are a little smaller. That's amazing. You. Oh shit. Well, he's been in a few Asians. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> no, not hundreds. <laughs> Ladies, Jerry is. He's gonna love you like you're the first. <laughs> oh shit. Seriously. Uh, yeah. I think I. I think I lived kind of like a fast life in the last like seven eight years. I think some of my audience knows that I. I think I probably publicly look kind of like quite a tool for quite some time, bringing like a lot of like girls to festivals, but like multiple at the same time and just doing really stupid stuff. Dude, you're the fucking man. Gives a shit. What they These do. bitches yeah. want to be there, man. Well, I mean, I had a lot of White fun. Bitches, I mean, ladies. I think I'm just surprised to see that uh, at a younger age than I expected that I literally just don't even want anything to do with it really anymore. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, every time I meet a, a partner or a potential someone, I just literally just look at like, what kind of motherly qualities do you have? Do you seem to be nurturing to me? Like nurturing in general and mm. 
do I see that as like potential for like raising a good kid? That's wisdom. That's just all I can think about. Damn, that's some deep. Which sucks because I moved to LA and like they ain't like that out there. I'm in, LA. I'm in Vegas, so uh, some, some, I heard it's kind of similar. <laughs> <laughs> so, something else come, come to mind is um, I don't want to ghost you out. I don't give a fuck, Mike. Come Fine, on. very well. Um, based on more than a few conversations, uh, the way Jerry and I put down love. Is a, our preferred modality is what we charitably term all in, which means like hookup culture, hookup culture. You were hanging out with your friends as a new girl. She's like, oh my God, ah. you run that shit. She's like, oh my God, what are you doing after? Ah. You get back home, make her a cup of coffee. She's like, oh, Ubers, like there's just not a lot of Ubers. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you going to do? There's some blowjob stuff. You do some touching stuff. You might make out. Somebody might pull out a dirty old condom and have some sex. Jared. I'm just kidding. He doesn't use condoms. Just kidding. He sure does. Of course. <laughs> and um, you can, in hookups like that, most hookups, go to a more immersive form of lovemaking. But it's tough. Um, mostly because the person who receives it, if they're female is going to understand from you making love to them like that, that there's a high probability this person's really into me. And the thing is with Jared and I, like that, that's actually just how we prefer to do things. What do I mean? Uh, for example, if you said, hey, like virtual reality, your wife's cool with it. It's not a real person, but it, it seems like a real person. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? If cunnilingus isn't on the list, I just don't show up. Yeah. Uh, I'm licking everything. Every part of your body is going to my mouth. <laughs> We're making out for a very long time. I'm going to take you into the shower. I'm going to wash your whole fucking body. I'm going to dry your whole fucking body. I'm going to make it dirty again. We're going to repeat that cycle a oh, lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, I only want to do that to my wife because yeah. two things. Well, one, I'm married. And two, she's so fucking worth it. And also, like, she understands it's real. Mm -hmm. You do that shit to someone you met a few days ago you are going to have a fucking problem on your hands because they will be like, what are we? And you're like, we hooked up last night. And she's like, no, 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 no. Hooking up is when I'm drunk and I suck a guy's dick for a while. He loses his boner and pass out. And then I get an Uber home. <laughs> That's hooking up. What you did to me for six hours, give or take was <laughs> a magical experience that I want forever. And you're like, Oh Jesus Christ. And then welcome to Jerry's life. <laughs> Drama free. Of course. Of course it is. <laughs> so that's another reason like hookups at some point, you're like, I have more to give than, than the capacity for hookup acceptance allows me. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Also like just from yeah. a purely sanitary perspective, you meet someone at the club, like, I don't know if I'm just going to go down on you. I've heard of shit happening. Diseases exist. And I'm not just going, I'll just stop. I'm not just going down <laughs> on the, all the holes, folks, all the holes. I've been concerned for, for the relationships or like, like the, uh, the sexual interactions that you have where the girl wants to be like slapped in various places and like, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. Like, appreciated and maybe at the same time calls you daddy. It's something I've always been kind of curious about. Tell um, me about your on? father. Oh. She's like, she starts crying. You're like, just kidding. <laughs> Call me your father. She's crying even more. You're like, oh, I should have never brought them. I was wondering if there's like, if there's like a barrier there or if there's still a level of like intimacy that you can reach or if there's always going to be some kind of something blocking that. Oh, uh, you ever heard of the Madonna whore complex? Yeah, yeah. You got that? You used to. I mean, potentially. Potentially. But I mean, like with a girl like that, it's like lots of fun sex. And then for me, it definitely would be like, eh, how intimate can we be beyond this? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's fun, but yeah. Like, is there any deepness that can come out of this? Uh, also, the yeah, future? yeah, developing depth takes some time. The best sex you'll ever have is with someone you've had sex with a lot. You yeah. find out how everything works. You work, she works. You have conversations about it. You experiment. It's giggly. It's fun. Blah, blah, blah. It's the fucking blast. You have sex with someone for the first time or sexual relations. It's a very high probability. It's fucking sweet. But the, it could be sweeter if you keep going. The problem is if you keep going, they're your girlfriend. All of a sudden, you, they moved in. There's a dog in your house. She's like, his name's Connor. He likes treats. And you're like, what the fuck is my life? You pack up your shit. You drive to Missouri and you restart. Oh my fuck! <laughs> All right, well, then we got a lot more out of that question than we needed. <laughs> so, Mike, shut up! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Exercise questions. Some of these are kind of basic questions, so 
I'm like thinking, how many like, grams of protein should I? Yeah. <laughs> God, uh, you your body weight in pounds. <laughs> uh, Ryan asked, what the, "What's the difference between active rest period and a deload?" Active rest is longer than a deload. Yeah. It's typically two to three weeks or two to four weeks long, where a deload is typically only one week. Okay. And while a deload may involve uh, oftentimes structured exercise, but at a much lower volume and intensity and frequency, active rest may involve nothing at all in the gym. Ideally, you just don't go to the gym for a few weeks. When you're looking at like an annual plan structure, it's the period in which you're kind of done competing, uh, whereas deloads are used as fatigue management modalities all the time. On your way to compete. On your way, yeah. Prashanthamanam. I bet that was a perfect pronunciation. It's racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What's the doc's opinion about using reverse banded hack squats for quad hypertrophy? They already know the answer. They're asking I, the I'm actually not uh, going to answer that one. I'm uh, I'm refer to my son Fuck. who is upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse in every conceivable way possible. Yep. It makes the force curve or the strength curve of the machine the opposite of Go what, of you, what want. you want. Yep. You right. want a deep stretch deep and stretch. a ton of force at the stretch, easy on the top end. Reverse banding makes it opposite to that. Some of the things we've heard, it my knees feel better. Okay, well, so warm up longer. Yep. Also, just start doing hack squats a little more. Yep. You'll feel better. Uh, what's another thing we've heard? I can use more plates. But that's that's the obvious. That they usually don't admit that. Up front. Don't that's exactly that. why they're doing it. Yeah, mostly people do it because it makes their knees feel better, or they just heard some coach doing it, or some bodybuilder yeah. they follow on Instagram does it. It also connotes a serious. Like, um, I'll tell you this: I, I never lost my you know, beginner's mind in the gym, so I can look at what I see in the gym from two perspectives. One is my own, which is you know like I've been around, and the other is like a person who doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. And I still get the sense that when someone's tying a band around a machine. I get my regular person sense. It's like, whoa, that's so advanced and they know cool things and they must be in the know. And I have a feeling a lot of people who do that are like, yeah, man, I'm serious. And all these idiots here are just working, working out. I'm training. It's like, yeah, that's cool. The band is cool. Mm -hmm. It's like someone who puts on a, like a full bulletproof tack vest with metal plates to go airsoft. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you're the man, but none of this is necessary. Uh, can I buy that? <laughs> <laughs> to go airsoft shooting? Yeah, that's right. Your airsoft bill is $2,000 because it turns out Kevlar costs a lot of money. Yeah. So, you know, mostly there are no good reasons for doing it, but uh, so stop doing it. Would you say there's anything that's more beneficial to add on to the hack squat to like increase the curve more optimally or no? If there were some way to make the deep stretch harder, Even right? Harder. Uh, somebody pushing down, which is hard machine. to do that. Very hard to do. Somebody pushing down on the machine, but it's not consistent. So yeah, that's yeah. tough. Um, Hack squat's a very then, good force curve. So I would, it does, yeah. And then yeah. so adding in some potential at the end, some some length and partial stuff might yep. be pretty good. Yep. So John Meadows had a really great system where he did or a modality. Mm -hmm. You do a, a full rep and then you do the bottom half of a rep and then you mm -hmm. do a full rep and then the bottom half. That is a lot of length and work and it's probably a great way to try to train. Nobody wants to do that though. As you read about it, you're like, fuck that. That shit is hard as fuck. I'm embarrassed with two plates on the shit. But reverse band, you're a four plate hack squatter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to quote Russian guy, you're like fucking around the call on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, after our workout early today, I'm glad we did like just machines and nothing with weights on it two exercises really <laughs> i mean nobody has to see what weight i'm lifting you guys real talk slow you guys made me get we're up. about to train now and uh jared was like mike what do you think about this guy how much training can he as i look him up and down i was like two exercises that's it he's soft he's fucking soft bro <laughs> <laughs> i just looked into your eyes and i was like you're fucking soft bro <gasps> fuck just kidding don't hurt me <laughs> also you trained harder how, how did i do what oh, was my amazing. percentage amazing yeah amazing nice. just like total control Amazing effort. Coaching cues were taken. Coaching perfectly. cues, you're taken. There's absolutely nothing left to be desired. Yeah. And you took it all away. Mm -hmm. I'm blushing. Just, I've said mm -hmm. that to female Asians before in the same circumstance. Let me tell you this, <laughs> man. You're a real uh, you're a real brave person to be around Jerry like this. You give Jerry a fucking brown skinned, tattooed up, face pierced Asian bitch. <laughs> you might as well lose that bitch like a set of fucking keys. Your hair's bro. almost long enough. One it's almost minute convincing. she's there. <laughs> and Jerry's the Jerry's filter for what is masculine and feminine got a real high bar. A lot of lot of signal to noise on that oh, one. So shit. you might look turn the right way and Jerry will gobble you up. Man. God damn it. But you're safe with me. Come, come here. Yeah, come here. says the man with Filipino wife. Hey, listen, I bought in. <laughs> and in uh Ugo fetish. <laughs> Oh no. Are, is this public now? <laughs> this is terrible. Um, luckily you're too good looking for me, 
but like, uh, I shouldn't, this is terrible. <laughs> um, uh, my adult film stars that I prefer, even though I don't know their names, if you're really pretty, eh, it doesn't work. If you're like a little bit or a lot of bit kind of ugly, oh my God. You like uh, some butterface butter fetish. Butterface fetish. Butter face butter fetish. Face yeah. fetish <laughs> if you're a butterface, stay away from me. I'm a married man. Uh, but that shit is goddamn gold. I don't know what it is, man. I didn't make it up. I didn't choose it. But that's why I like Jared so much. <laughs> hey, uh, is Jared good looking in the face? No. No, 100%. Yeah. Did yeah. you say no 100%? 100%. You no. are. Yeah. See? Okay. Well, shit. All right. What about you? What do you think? He's a good looking guy. Yeah, he is. Is Jared good looking? You don't have to say yes. I'll protect you from him. <laughs> yeah. He's got the cute dimples. Yeah, some girl Baby comes up to him. Case. You're like, watch, watch. He's going to hit him. She's like, so what's like, what's up with your calf what's training program? Fuck. <laughs> 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 And I actually don't train him. She's like, okay, whatever. She walks off. You're like, should I have given her a scheme? She, you're like three by three, 90%. She's like, oh my God, you want to fuck? You're like, wow, it's that easy. <laughs> Mike Idris says, asks, uh, this is something actually I remember you discussing with Fawad on his podcast, but he says full ROM versus long length, long length partials. Yeah, we just don't have enough data on length and partials to, to overrule all other training before. So I'd say you probably just lean in to some lengthened work and we'll figure out ways to do your full ROM in such a way that challenges the length and portion more until we have many more studies comparing the two across the entire length of the muscle. And it may turn out to be that actually length and training is just categorically better in every way. And then I absolutely stopped doing full range of motion outside of my jujitsu training that I would recommend to bodybuilders. They mostly focus on the stretch, but we just don't have that kind of data yet. So I think full range of motion is a great default position, but we have enough data to really give length and bias a real solid try and it'll probably work out real great. So I wouldn't look at it as a versus. I would look at it as a, how do we get the, it's like, um, you know, regular engine versus NAS. Like, well, actually you want to go really fast with the regular engine and I hit the NAS. Uh, it's kind of a combination thing for now, more mm -hmm. of a versus thing. Yeah. 100%. Nice. Uh, Damon asks, what's your thoughts on young people taking PEDs? Dumb. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like and young, uh, like I said earlier, I think I give an age. Like if you're under 25 and you haven't been training for like 10 years plus, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing. Unless you're some fucking phenom and like, you know, you're winning classic physique pro shows as a natural kid, and you're like, all right, next step. Mm. Yeah, like I got, I got goals, right? That Anton mm -hmm. kid in classic, whatever. Yeah. Juice up, you're the man. You're gonna fucking win the Olympia or some shit. <sighs> Lot of kids though, not gonna win the Olympia. <laughs> still on a ton of gear, mm -hmm. and we just really enjoy youth enjoy the fact that you have tons of natty gays coming your way anyway did you say natty gays natty, <laughs> natty gains although if you have natty gays coming your way i would take them all uh and then once you reach uh, your mid-20s you'll be emotionally mature enough stable enough in life to really yeah. make that good choice you know i'm uh you know when i was 12 if someone would have offered me like hard drugs I mean, I was a moralistic fuck when I was 12, but I, I don't know if I trust having the wherewithal to make the right choice. Whereas, um, you know, if I'm in my mid twenties, I have a little bit more context for life, you know? And then is it seems like taking gear is like, welcomes you into this club of also other hardcore people. Everyone's cool. Everyone's eating big bowls of rice and meat growing all the time. They fucking talk like this. Everything's fucking sweet. And you're the man and you're big and muscular and you have women and your dick works all the time. But in reality, it's a really mixed bag and sometimes a lot of really nasty downsides. And sometimes people still mistake you for natty when you've been on gear for three years and then it's real bad news. So when you're young, you got all the shit coming to you naturally. I'd say stay the fuck away from gear. Also, your brain's not done developing and gear makes you dumber. So go ahead and roll those, uh, roll those dice if you want. But I would highly recommend against it. I feel that. It is just definitely hard, I think, for, for kids these days, especially since so many of them are passionate about like jumping on the Olympia stage now. I think just what the really fuck does that mean? Is. Almost no one will get on the Olympia stage. Mm -hmm. It's a funny thing to be passionate about. I suppose it's no different than kids being passionate about making it to the NBA, which almost no one makes it to the NBA right. anyway. I mean, you're Asian, yeah. you know that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm Jewish, so we hi, we invented the NBA. We really did. Mm -hmm. But then we became not good as good at it as white people and then later black people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then aliens are gonna show up and they're gonna be better than everyone in basketball. That'd be kind of sweet. But then Michael Jordan will beat them, Space Jam, anyone? Azza just asks, uh, favorite current bodybuilder can't be Jared. <laughs> <laughs> favorite current bodybuilder? Rafael Brufando. Rafael Brunjao. Dowda. Guys with shape. And then Nick Walker, man, because I got to train with him and he's a, he's a fucking shit. He's a good friend of mine. Nick's uh, just 
super fucking hardworking and he spoke everything he ever said he was going to do into existence, even though everybody doubted him, including myself at some point. I told, I was like, man, this guy is not going to be Mr. Olympia. His shape's not that great. He got bigger and bigger. His shape turned into fucking great shape. Kept putting on muscle. So, yeah, this guy's fucking, he's a workhorse. And he, against everybody talking shit, just kept fucking <laughs> putting his head down and doing exactly what he said he was going to do. So yeah. mm. a lot of shape guys. And then Nick, I just respect the fuck out of Nick. You respect Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. And I mean, his physique too. I really like it. It's fucking yeah. crazy in person. You can't not like it when you no, see person. It's like, what the fuck? It's wild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jin asks, uh, is it true that some people respond better to lower reps while some respond to higher? Unequivocally. Absolutely. It's true by muscle too. Mm -hmm. Some yep. of your muscles will uh, really respond better to lower reps, some others to high. So that's just because of like higher percentage of like fast twitch. That's, well. that's part of it, but there are no doubt many other things. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just something you have to do a lot of trial and error for. Like if we, if you take the tools that we give you at RP, understandings of the volume landmarks, minimum effective volume, maximum recoverable, figuring out how to proxy or stimulus to fatigue ratio. Mm -hmm. Those are tools of analysis by which to then take and apply to different kinds of training that you try note all of your individual responses if someone's like hey do you want to do like a 25 uh rep max chest workout i'd probably be like i don't this is going to make my chest tired because i have a chest that loves lower reps and heavier weights mm -hmm. but if you say hey like let's do a leg workout with sets of five i'll be like that's not going to do dick to my legs man yep. especially mm -hmm. my quads which seem to respond for higher reps and so on and so forth and, and jared's not the same way There's subtle differences between us yeah. so you have to train for a while and I think do a spectrum of rep ranges for most muscles, not just stick to one, but lean into one at least for time more than the other. See how it goes. Sometimes it'll just on average, mm -hmm. a muscle will have higher or lower reps than another. Mm -hmm. I found out for me, it's higher reps. So, just in general. Uh, in general, but especially for legs. Notice my legs have seemed to blow up on like 20 reps. Yep. Shit. At least. So. Yep. But less than that, your kind of knees just hurt. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean... I've gained like a lot of strength on squats from doing eight rep squats, mm -hmm. but like my legs never really gained that much size. Trippy. What a tragedy. Sil, Sil, Silito asks, can you talk about BBC TB for injuries, best dosage and other benefits it may have? No clue. I know they work. I don't even know the dosages offhand. Cody asks, what's the baby do? What's that? Courtney asks, when's the baby do? Oh, tell Cody to come up and tell me that to my face so I can rip his jaw off his fucking face. <laughs> Just kidding, Cody. I'm sure you're tough in real life. Or Courtney. <laughs> bitch. Uh, Courtney, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's actually yours. How does that work? Uh, yeah, I've got a big gut. Shit happens. It's due in a month. We're going to name him Connor. Nice. He's not going to have a gender. He'll decide that when G is older. <laughs> Jared, your Jared godfather. All right. God person? Yeah. Just God. Just <laughs> God. Just call me God. <laughs> Troy says, uh, tell Mike that I'm, I'm in love with his bald head and his RP videos gave me 10 pounds two years in. Fuck yeah. Troy? Troy. Tell him, Troy, if, Troy, if we ever meet in person, please remind me who you are and we'll make out. <laughs> Hopefully I'm there. He's like, oh God, I hate RP. <laughs> we'll do one last one. Uh, Tucker says, why can't you talk to guys in their mid-20s or was it a joke? Of course it's a joke. Don't what? Talk. You probably made some dumbass joke about how your parole officer says this, that, and whatever. Oh, yeah. No, okay. I'll tell a story. <laughs> so uh, there was like this, um, I had an opportunity to go to a pro tennis match mm -hmm. and then later a pro football game. Because, you know, like when you're doing well in life, people give you free tickets. Mm -hmm. And the tennis match, I was able to restrain myself. But the pro football game, I found out where the, t uh, the two teams had their respective locker rooms after the game. The guys like to shower off. I just ran in there, dude, and I just started jerking guys off as fast as I could. Everybody. <laughs> And then so the judge basically told me that in the state of Maryland until 2027, I'm not allowed to be around people from age 20 to 28. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, easy sentence as far as I'm concerned. So oh, I just can't go to gyms in Maryland. So there's a lot of that kind of person around. Okay. I've been avoiding Maryland for a while. Okay. Uh, last one. Jordan asks, what would be the conditions needed to train the same body part two days in a row? It does recovers very quickly it doesn't take a lot of damage so you train your bicep uh, lower volumes yeah, too. less volume the day before like yeah mm -hmm. so like let you do two sets of biceps at the end of your back workout on monday on tuesday your biceps aren't sore you're connected with them you're as strong as ever fucking hit it uh and as a matter of fact like you can train your whole body like that yeah. like uh there's a ton of programs 
uh, some of them very well described and the theory well described by Dr. Eric Helms, mm-hmm. uh, 3MJ, where you can train five or six days, sort of whole body, and you just don't do a crap load of volume in any one day, two or three sets of everything, and you're perfectly well recovered to hit it again the next day. If your joints are recovered and you feel strong, your muscle isn't sore and you're good to go, you're fucking golden. There's nothing wrong with training every day. It's just that if you do like eight sets of fucking biceps, it's unlikely you're going to be ready to go the day after. Have you seen any difference between... Uh Higher frequency trainings or everything just seems... Higher frequency tend to grow the muscle faster, but after a few months, your joints start hurting and your systemic fatigue is too high. So it's probably good to pulse periods of higher and lower frequency. Lower Mm. frequency to make steady long-term gains and then higher frequency to make more rapid gains that you can hopefully hold on to once the frequency uh, bumps down again. Nice. Awesome. Well, I ask uh, everybody one last question at the end of every podcast. So if you guys were to die tomorrow and you had one message you could send out to the entire world, what would it be? The singularity is near. Don't fuck Bro, it up. Bro, you took my shit. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> For the love of God, don't fuck it up. I got one. Exactly on the vein of Jared's. When machines are arguably smarter than humans, think less about what you want to ask the machines. Sorry, I fucked that up already. Think less about what you can tell the machines to do and get out of them. Try to think more about you, what you can ask them about the wisdom of the world and what's going on because they'll know better than us at some point. A lot of people, they worry that machines will be out of control once they're really smart. Um, I hope they're out of control because I want something smarter being in control versus us. If your dog owned you, you'd have a big fucking problem because if it could talk, it'd be like, bro, guess where we're going? You're like, let me guess. Pet smart. He's like, yep, we're going to buy 800 pounds of food and I'm going to throw up all over myself after I try to eat it. You're like, we did that yesterday. He's like, yep, same shit every day. You're like, wow, my dog's a fucking moron. And then we're like, yeah, we got to make sure AI doesn't get out of control. Out of control of what? Our feeble fucking intellects? So when AI comes around and it's really, really smart, ask it some questions instead of telling you what to do. It might, uh, might end up better for everybody. Nice. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Where can everybody find you guys? Are you out of jail yet? Are you on parole? Yeah, I'm still on parole, man. <clears throat> they can find me in jail. I'm in jail where I'm at 24 <laughs> seven in this motherfucker, baby. Instagram and YouTube and all that good stuff. Just type in my name. I don't do the fancy fucking handles or whatever. But with an underscore, right? Jared underscore feather. Yeah. But all of I assume if you type in Jared feather, it's popping up. It'll pop up. <laughs> you were just leaning on the algorithm. YouTube with Mike quite a bit. We train people like we did today. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jared has his own YouTube. Jared oh, feather yeah, on YouTube. My own YouTube. It's great stuff. I just put you like, out. Yep. A lot of just raw hardcore training on yeah. there. Yep, and uh, you just type in Mike Isretel, and if you type in Mike Isretel making progress on YouTube, you get my philosophy channel full of mm. bullshit that I'm way underqualified for, or not entirely qualified at all. And then uh, Renaissance Periodization RP Strength on YouTube is probably the best place to find me, and you'll get all the all the jokes no one ever wanted to hear when I was a child expressed to an audience of pretend people, which has a big number behind it, and I never see any money, because Mr. Nick Shaw says he isn't uh, going to get around to paying me, but he hasn't yet, because I just need to keep working harder. <laughs> nice hell yeah. hell yeah thanks for coming on the podcast guys of course thanks for having that was freaking awesome just literally like we covered everything That's good can't even think of something we didn't so thanks again of course love you guys thanks for coming on and as you guys know you guys if you want to support the podcast you can rate us five star on every on apple podcast spotify or anywhere you find a podcast and also by subscribing to the cho- the youtube channel and clicking the bell button because you know that helps us get bigger and greater guests like mike and jared here today so thank you guys for watching again and uh, i love you guys and i hope to see you next time